it's a very, very small group of people, many of them clueless. Hi everybody, it's Gene Simmons, and you're not. This is uh, Kiss My Collectibles podcast, but you know that. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the live fifth anniversary edition of Kiss My Collectibles. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason Herndon, and with me, as always, is this guy, Joseph Laszlo-Olich. Can you say your last name for a second? Nobody can. It's all right. Get in line. And then joining us from Australia, our other co-host... Nicholas Nick, Buckland. Nicholas, four and a half. Ah, five, five. <laughs> it would turn five. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. I quit. I quit. Oh, this, is, this, is actually some, uh, this is actually some John Five merchandise I designed. I don't know if he'll go for it, though. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see, we're celebrating our fifth anniversary, and uh, we've got a whole bunch of people lined up in this little backstage area that's going to be absolutely a blast to talk to um i can't wait to bring a, a, a lot of these guys on so anyway um how about all these guys not a oh, lot of these guys we can't wait to bring all of them on that's right all of them on at the same time <laughs> one guy can wait you know <laughs> in fact i think somebody's trying to get in our studio now and it's i'm getting a pop-up that says we can only have 10 people we have more than 10 people hmm. oh no i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have joe i gotta boot you that's that's fine. I've been waiting. I've been waiting five years for that. I think, or I think however long I've been on. I think five is trying to trying to come in. So yeah. it's saying the studio is full. I just got a text from John. So let's do this. Dave Scott, my buddy, why don't you log off and watch and I'll message you when we're gonna bring you in after a while. You okay with that? I know you can't you can't I can't yeah. hear you, but if you can uh just like, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do oh, it. What's that? We're hearing he's okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm hearing from the control room that yes, he can go. Yes. Try again, five. <laughs> I didn't think I I invited, you know, where it would be 10 people. So anyway, uh, we're going to do, the show's not going to follow its normal format. You know, we're not going to, you know, we are going to show some things. I know that the Joe has some stuff to show. I don't know if Nicholas does. I got a few things yeah, to yeah. show. Some of these other guys do. I know five John Five does. I, I think H John Humphrey's going to show some stuff. But uh, we've got a nice lineup for you. We've got John Five. We've got John Humphrey from Seether and the Nixon. We've got Mr. Mark Slaughter. We've got uh, returning and uh, the co-creator of this podcast, Andrew Scambati, is here with us. And uh, he's going to be talking about his new project as well. We've got my really good buddy, Pat Lucero. My, one of my oldest friends, Danny Dabbs, is here. Adam, Adam NC in the comments says, I demand an appearance from Danny Dabbs. Well, you're going to get it. You're, you're going to get it. So, <laughs> uh, And let's go ahead and bring in <clears throat> our fourth co-host, John Five. Oh, howdy. <laughs> Sorry about that, John. I invited too many people to be a part of the show. You apparently you can only have ten people on this thing. That number works. four, right. <laughs> number four on the show, number five in your hearts, Mister John Five. Uh, how are you? Good to see you. Good, good to see you. Thank you for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Look and uh, it's wonderful. Fifth anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been a, there's been lots of ups and downs. More ups than downs, but it's been a it's been a quite a journey over the last five years. We've gotten to do a lot of cool stuff. We've met a lot of cool people, and um, you know, so we just, and you educated a lot of people as well. That's well, wonderful. I don't know it's, how much we did that, but you know, <laughs> no, it's it's entertaining and it's just uh, 
it's wonderful. You know, I think a lot of people, especially in these weird times, they really look forward to the show as me being one of them. And uh, I think it's a, a wonderful escape and it's uh, a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. happy anniversary. Thank you, John. I appreciate right. it. We have a crap load of people leaving um, messages. I'm not even going to be able to keep up with all this. Uh, you know, lots of people that I, you know, I talk to in the in the groups and stuff. You know, there's uh, Chuck is here and Joel Smith and and there's a whole bunch of people that I recognize. I think I saw. Can I see it. the comments too, or no? I don't know. Can y'all, Joe? There's a, there's a little I, thing I, at the I, side I, says private yeah. chat, but you change it to comments and you can see the stream. Yeah, change it to the comments. Oh yeah. Tim Cliz. Okay. He's a, there a we are. Nice. Hey, everybody. Yeah. There's everybody. We'll try to, we'll try to, you know, I know I can, uh, it, this is the first time I've ever used this live software. So uh, I thank my buddy Pat for turning me on to it. And who knows, we may do a lot more like this. So, you know, I can throw up these cool little comments like Joel Smith there. I met Joel at a show. He's a great guy. Um, pretty neat stuff Mm -hmm. so thanks you know what's cool about this is is like if we're doing um talking about merchandise Mm -hmm. and we hold something up someone can type in this Mm -hmm. is me acting like i'm typing okay someone can type in and say hey (laughs) dum-dums this is from this or something that's right you know what else we can do with this software somebody have something to hold up Oh. Um, no. oh, I, yeah, not, not in front of me. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> drinking. Yeah. It's like eight in the morning. Yeah. We can so yeah. now we're, oh, now, yeah, now we're we not go. cropping people out anymore. You know, they get the full screen to show their items. Right, That's right. pretty cool, right? So, John, first we have to address the elephant in the room. Why are you wearing the shirt that I should be wearing? You should be wearing a shirt that says "Nice Guy." I yeah. should yeah. be wearing the team. <laughs> <laughs> I see if the mail got the mail got confused well, again. If I take this vest off. There's this beautiful illustration of you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so it's just this, this shirt I got you, but I just didn't like show you the back yet. Yeah. I, I got it. Okay. You all right. YouTube is all ages, so um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give a claim. That is hilarious. Well, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't just say something. You know, uh, talking about the origins of the show. Um, you know, five years ago, I started a, a vinyl group in on facebook called kiss my wax and uh started it with my my friend pablo who's been a um a moderator and and other websites that i've had before and um a gentleman named tom shannon and uh and also andrew scambatti and in the beginning of creating those um those that group and everything and and what we thought that we would try to do with that and try to make it a a place for everyone to come and not argue and bicker. I would just been kicked out of a group where people were just being assholes. And I was like, look, I want to run a group that's not like that, you know? So we tried, tried to do that. And then in the, that evening in that discussion, Andrew said, we should do a vinyl podcast. So, um, and I thought that was a great idea. We all thought it was a great idea. And so I'm going to bring back my old co-host, Andrew Scambatti. Wow. There he is. Hey. <laughs> Hi. You know, it actually brought a tear to my eye when I saw the the little video. I didn't know <laughs> that, that you guys were going to do that. Yeah. It just mm. it it reminded me back to those early chats where um, maybe people watching don't know that there was a lot of off air talk between the original three of us about mm-hmm. what we wanted to do yeah. and how we wanted to do it, and a lot of thought went into that, and. Um, I think some of that may be forgotten over the years because it's been five years. I I can't even believe that. But we really just wanted to, we really wanted it to be like just seeing your friends at a record show. And I think if you go back and watch those early episodes, that vibe is still there. And maybe it's something that we need now because we're all home looking at each other's screens and, and all that. And, you know, we can't go to, some of us can't go to our friend's house down the street, but you can log on and, and watch old episodes and things like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, uh, it, I was very, uh, I was very nostalgic. I yeah. Wasn't ex- I wasn't expecting that. So. That was, that was all Nicholas, man. He came up with every bit of that. And I was, he was sending me clips as he was, you know, putting it together. And I was like this, that shot of us three or our doppelgangers or whatever was. <laughs> yeah. I'm just really glad. You I, I saw, 
No, no, yeah. No, I'm, well, I was gonna. I actually wrote to Andrew and said, "I'm thinking of doing some doppelgangers. Um, how do you feel about Snape from Harry Potter?" And he goes, "No, no, 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 <laughs> Rory Gallagher." And I went, "Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's just because I like you." Yeah, he. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, man. But I saw when it ran, man. I saw you. I saw you snicker. I could see you down here at the bottom laugh when you saw that, you know, pop up. And and I'm pretty sure I know why. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, so thank but you. Has Andrew. it really been five years though? Has it really been five years? To d today is the day that we our first episode aired, December fourth. Yes. And and remember, people don't even realize that it. Those original episodes, they took a long time to put together because we were finding so much information yep. to put in with all those all the records that we had showed because it was a it was something brand new. Yeah. The group was was just starting. And and I think we said, what did we say? We said, uh, let's get five hundred people in the group and then we'll drop the first episode. Yep. And we were like, Come on, we just come on, we gotta do it, we gotta do it, we gotta do five episodes and and, and then we, we got five hundred people and then we did it, and then every time we recorded the next episode, we're like, Can you believe this previous episode got this many views? Yeah. And uh and, and it was it, it was weird. It it just I just I'm remembering back fondly. Mm -hmm. all it, was, that stuff. it was crazy how some of those those first couple of episodes actually those four first four or five episodes just blew up man you know we were getting you know blew, blown up for you know now we have 11 you know oh 20 000 people in our groups and but back then we had a few hundred you know maybe a thousand people and we were getting five and six and seven thousand views on those early episodes mm -hmm. it was but i mean like instantly it wasn't like it was instantly. a slow burn it was right it would happen and then we were like well, what are we going to do next and right you know it it was um it, it was i think I, I think because it's like a collected learning and that's the thing like it all yeah. all this information just came together in one place and that was that was the magic of those ones i mean i didn't even i didn't collect any vinyl but then but i watched every episode of those anyway so you know it was great my you know? uh <laughs> my favorite episode was when i got that destroyer record in the mail and uh, I got this giant box and I pulled the record. I was like, this, this <laughs> I remember that <laughs> where it was destroyed. And I was like, I stopped Des the show for this. Destroyer. <laughs> destroyer. <laughs> I, I, I would, know. I would be on the show and I'd be on stage and stuff like that. And everybody's, you know, around and, and, uh, but I loved getting in my bunk and watching the show. Cause I had all these, you know, uh, early, earlier shows to watch of kiss my wax and kiss my collectibles. And it was so much fun to watch these, you know? And I was like, God damn, I got to go to bed. I've been watching fucking three hours of this stuff, you know, but and it's you, so entertaining. It's you really have no, fun. You have no life. my friend. <laughs> I know, but like, what are you going to do? You're on a bus, you know, like, it's like, mm. I like so Jonah, I love wonderful. your story. I love your story of Rob Zombie coming past and That's just looking great. at you and giving you a certain look. Okay. Oh yeah, looking <laughs> at my curtain want... and watching and seeing you guys and he just went you can yeah. like, watch like, porn, a disgust, like a disgust. Like, <laughs> like at least watch porn, you're watching three guys. Like, come on. Right. <laughs> I know. He was just like because he could hear it and he like stuck his head and he was just like no. and then closed the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> just no. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So, um, Andrew, I, so Andrew, you know, of course he's been on this show many times talking about all of his projects and stuff. And I want to give you the opportunity to talk about what's coming up next. Tell us about it, dude. Yeah. Uh, well, first I want to show something new because we, we did that way back when, and hold it on. ties into, it ties into what's going on. He's hold not on. ready. He's not ready. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to open it. Oh, uh, what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? All right, go nuts. I have to tell a story about those things. So I'm not going to say who the guy was because he might not want his name shared. But uh, I was with a friend who had bought all of those. And they came up with big little kiss panda bears or whatever. And they come on. I was just relentlessly making fun of them while he was purchasing them. And I also refused to help him carry them. So I was like, I'm not helping you carry those. You, if, if you want to do this, it's, it's on you, man. We're walking through the shopping mall, and he's struggling to carry them. And some woman just like, "Oh, look at the cute bears! Are these for your daughter?" And he looks at me, looks at the woman, and goes, "Yeah." Embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that he bought them. Okay, so so anyway, so um, 
anyone that knows me knows that the reunion tour is my favorite tour of the band. So uh, I, I'm always up to collect anything reunion tour. I'm not talking about Spencer's crap, per se. But I'm talking about like cool ads, posters, things like that. So I'm in Cleveland, and I got the Scene magazine from July 1996. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I mention this is because there's a cool Kiss article in here, and I didn't even I didn't even know that this that this was here. But I remember I got it, and I was at work, and I opened it up, and the headline of the article says "Kiss and Makeup: The Greatest Show on Earth Returns." Oh, so I just thought that was cool. My very first fan film was called "The Greatest Show on Earth," and I try to collect everything that uses that phrase in conjunction mm-hmm. with Kiss. So I was like, man, it's Kiss, it's Cleveland, and they say "The Greatest Show on Earth." That's so cool. So this is something really cool. It didn't. It only cost me three bucks. Yeah. It, it was a free zine here in Cleveland when it was there in '96. It's still a magazine to this day. Uh, but anyway, this kind of like this one. Out. I have. That yeah, one, that's I, it. That one's not this three dollars. One no, this one. That's the one I just recently got. But I didn't know it was Cleveland. And yeah. there's like oh. there's like six different issues of like them in the seventies and scene magazine. I mean, they were yeah. on the cover of scene so many times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, so it's Cleveland, it's kiss, but it, uh, this dovetails perfectly into my next project, which is alive 96. Excellent. So basically what this is, is uh, every time I make a kiss project, I try to fill in different gaps on kisses history and Try and give fans things that Kiss should have given us. So at first it was The Greatest Show on Earth, which was the movie that never came out. Then Kiss at Midnight was the TV show. So this is a the VHS tape live concert package that should have come out in late 96, early 97. And and I'm sorry if somebody is 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 typing something. I know there's a comment on there. I can't read it. I'm blind. <laughs> it was about your uh, singles box set oh, falling apart. Joe Smith in his day when Andrew was showing singles, and that actually happened. Yeah, and, uh, and then we replayed it later on in the show. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Live '96 is going to be the uh, the VHS live concert package that we never got at the reunion tour. If you watch all those other reunion tour pro shot videos, it leaves a lot to be desired. Either they're shot, either the quality isn't great, or they're shot from far away, or they're only shot close up. You never get. You never get the excitement of 1996 in one single video. So that's what I've done. I've taken 15 songs. I've taken the best moments of the reunion tour, and I've put it in this package and called it a live 96. And our very own esteemed, um, I don't want to call him esteemed co-host, but esteemed guest and friend, Dave Scott, kind of helped me do this. I Excellent. had this idea, and I just kind of told him, I go, hey, what if I did this? And uh, him and I worked together to uh, to do it. I was sending him edits and sending him this and that. And, uh, you know, it's something I'm really proud of. It's something that uh, reminds me of that first time I saw the band in 96. Awesome. So, so when it does come out one week from today. Um, but can I see? Hold on. Let's see if I can see the live chat. Let's let me just switch over here. So I'm going to do something cool. Uh, Is there any truth to the rumor you had Kevin Valentine and Tommy Thayer over at your house to re-record some parts? Re-record? <laughs> they were already recorded. I didn't even re-record. Uh, okay, so I'm just looking through and I'm seeing some of these, uh, seeing some of these comments. And these are cool. All right, so how many people do we have in the chat right now? Uh, I don't know. Can we see mm. how many we have? Can you see in... that? I can't from here. I can't. All right, so here's. Uh, I'm going to ask a trivia question. And the person that answers, um, send uh, send Jason an email or mm-hmm. send um, – actually, here we go. Send me a Facebook message. My name on Facebook is the same as my name here. It's a public page. So uh, here's what I want to do. Um, the have- person who saw the earliest reunion show that's in the chat right now, type in the chat when you saw the reunion tour. The person that saw the earliest show that isn't on this panel oh, is in the chat only. <laughs> I'll send you a link of Kiss at Mi- Kiss uh, Kiss at Midnight. I'll send you a link of Live ninety six tonight, nice. so you can check it out early. Nice, uh, but it is coming out. Please read the description and don't ask questions. Don't be an. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what uh, what Andres wrote? Okay, or, or Andre. Um, okay, all right. So, uh, all right. So, my buddy uh, Bobby Caddis, uh, get at me on, on Facebook. All right. So, Bobby and Bobby Tim, Tiger Yeah, Bobby and Tim Cliz, send me a message on Facebook, and both of you are getting links to a live ninety six tonight. Wait, um, I was there. 
You Joe were was there. You were there. Mm. Yeah. I was. I, I was at Louisville. I know you said next. non-panel members, but you know. You, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to see it? Of course. Of course, we want to see it. All right. All right. Listen. I listen. I, I don't know. Um, but I do want to tell that story. Um, about that that Andre put up. So, and I think I might even still have. I think I might even still have the uh, the the screenshot that I took. Um. But I guess it, early in the group, early, early in the group, or this is before collectibles, this was before the Aquilinger, this was before anything. It was just it was just a vinyl group. And all we were talking about was Kiss vinyl. And I purchased a Hotter Than Hell vinyl. And I was a little disappointed in the vinyl because it was all written on and it whatever I bought wasn't what I saw in the picture. Apparently, the guy who had sold this record on eBay to me was also in our group. So when I was complaining about the record in the group, he was like, well, maybe you should read the description, blah, blah, blah. And so we we're going back and forth. So I guess a couple of weeks later, he posts another record for sale. And in his description, it says, uh, please read the description. Don't be an Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was so good. I thought it was so good. And I was, like, I was like, hey, man, I just, you know, you sent me, you sent me something that, you know, wasn't what it was in the picture. Yeah, we got several people. My buddy Steve Allen and uh, my buddy uh, Nick Graham, one of my oldest friends. We were all in Louisville, which was the second night. The second night. The second yeah, there's night. Nick. So yeah, the second night. Okay. Uh, but yeah, those three people that I called out: Tim Kliz, um, Bobby Caddis. I'll send you guys a link uh, tonight, and then yeah. you guys can enjoy it mm -hmm. tonight. That's awesome. So it airs for the public. Next Friday, right? Yeah, December 11th. And what's cool about this, this cool feature in YouTube, um, you can set a premiere date. And the moment that I set a premiere date in YouTube, it kind of starts a live countdown in YouTube. So the link, the actual link is going to be live on Monday. So you mm. can kind of go in, you could like it, you could follow it. So that way when it becomes live to the public, YouTube will send you a notification that says, hey, this is live. Uh, there'll also be a live chat just like it was for one last time. You know, awesome. it was, uh, it, you know, and, and a huge, a huge, huge thank you. And it's so funny to me that uh, I always say that thank you doesn't, it's not enough to say, but, you know, um, one last time really blew up. It has over 360,000 views. That is unbelievable. And it was in about five months. And that's because oh. you people out there are so great and so crazy that you, you guys did that. I was just the idiot that made it. And, you know, I don't even I, I don't, still don't even like it because oh. I made it and watched it hundreds of times. But, you know, you guys are, are the people that, that sent that out. And it one day doesn't go by where I don't get messages about people that have watched it, uh, uh, that have enjoyed it. There was one message that someone put on the Kiss FAQ where he says that him and his family, they put on the end of the road shirts that they bought at the concert and they pretend like they were going to a show and they sat and they watched it and they had this moment together as a family. And and I just thought that was incredible. So um, so yeah. So listen, thank you for that, and uh, and thanks, Bobby. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, look, a comment has come up from Rene Rodriguez, K Rock Weenie Roast. Does that mean that these that people who were oh, Tiger Stadium are now get their before. video removed from out of their grasp? That was so close. <laughs> <laughs> you got to send it to Rene oh, too, Andrew. Uh, Rene, <laughs> Rene Rodriguez, please also send me a message on Facebook. I will definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Send you send you the link. Good job, Renee. Renee okay. wins. <laughs> All right. So check check a live ninety six out. Andrew's next project uh, next Friday um, on YouTube, on, Vimeo on, on YouTube and Vimeo. Okay, on um, both of them. Vimeo is kind of that platform that is used for uh, content creators. It used for people in the industry, right. and um, you know it's uh, it, it's it, it's it, I guess it's more for people in the industry. So it, it doesn't have the traffic as YouTube does, but I put it there because the quality is a little bit higher. Sure. And uh, you also don't have to deal with those YouTube ads, which, by the way, uh, I don't get any money from the YouTube ads. It goes to the content creators. Uh, it goes to all of them. So the ads are put on there by YouTube. And if you pay for YouTube premium, obviously, you don't you don't get those. So uh, so mm. yeah, I'm not making any money off of this. I never make any money off any of this stuff. And it's just just for right. fun. So, so yeah. awesome. man. Are you on parlor as well? Oh, no. I can't, can't, can't oh, stream it. No, Nicholas. <laughs> Here, I'll, tell you, I'll, you know, I'll tell you another, I'll tell you another <laughs> funny story. When I was going back and forth with Dave Scott, mm. Dave was like, hey, do you have a TikTok? And my, my knee-jerk response was, no, I'm an adult. I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> what is a TikTok? I have no idea what this is. <laughs> 
All right, man. Let's uh, let's bring a couple of these other guests on. I want to I want to bring up uh, John Humphrey and Mark Slaughter and get them in here because they're patiently waiting. And uh, so let's let's bring in Mr. John Humphrey. John, what's up, guys? What's up? Cheers, my friend. And let's bring in Mark Slaughter. And since we're Greetings. bringing in Mark Slaughter, hey, Mark Slaughter. Slaughter. Mark Slaughter, are you? Are you, Good to see you. you crazy motherfucker, Mark Slaughter. Oh, Mark Crosby, come back a sage. <laughs> we'll bring in Pat Lucero, too, who's reading a reading Kiss book. special magazine. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, guys, I'm actually getting caught up on the news. And I didn't realize that uh, Andy Gibb has a new record out. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, who would have thunk? Well, I mean, who thought, right? <laughs> I <laughs> predict <laughs> the <guys. laughs> So, hello, Pat. How, How are, are you? you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Look, and uh, yeah. happy anniversary, by the way. Thank you. you. Know, happy uh, anniversary. Yes. 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 Happy Thank anniversary. You. Yes, John. Right. John Humphrey is, you know, if, uh, to all the people that are watching this, and I think we've got like 150 something watching, which is, I don't know, you know, impressive to me anyway. So, um, you know, to all the people that are watching, John Humphrey's kind of our quasi fourth or fifth. Um, Beetle. Co-host, co-host, Beetle, or whatever you want to call him. He does the Kiss My Wax <laughs> episodes with Joe and I now because you know, oh yeah, you know what well, Nicholas didn't used to know anything about vinyl, and now he's now he's old. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he knows everything about Queen vinyl. That's now. right, right. He does. He does. So, as you can oh, look, God. if you look behind John Humphrey, uh, you can tell <laughs> yeah. he has a lot of records behind him. Records so. there, and, and then more uh, on the floor and everywhere else. And we've had uh, we've had Mark on the show in the past. I'm sure every one of you know who Mark Slaughter is, the lead singer of Slaughter, and uh, his kiss from? his kiss ties goes all the way back to Vinnie Vincent Invasion, and the That's hot very shape funny. And Andre wrote, "Oh my God, it's Vinnie Vincent's singer." <laughs> That's awesome. Let's put that up, hey, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, thank you, Mark and John, for uh, for agreeing to come on and celebrate of with us. Of course, congratulations, five years, and uh, keeping us all uh, entertained and uh, informed about how m many uh, millions of pressings there are. <laughs> all of our favorites. <laughs> hey, when we did your episode, when I was up at Pat's, we showed a lot of uh, Mark Slaughter related vinyl, a lot of excursions. There you go. Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, old school stuff. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to educate, you know, all of the vinyl collectors out That's there. That's great. So, That's right. great. Hey, yeah. I gotta show you one thing real quick. Yeah, man. It's not not kiss related, but it is in some oh. way or another. Who's kiss? John, I think John, I think you'll get a kick out of this. This is a guitar that I got from Paul Hamer in 1982 when I graduated high school. Oh boy. And if you look at the at the design of this. Mick Mars had a yellow and black version of this. Paul yeah. had the white and black like this. And you can see at the top mm. that um, Paul sent me the little thing for the top of it. So I've had this for a lot of years. And, uh, and it uh, brings back a lot of great memories. But uh, this is my most Kiss-related guitar that I've got in the old arsenal here. I'm sure John's got more than I do over there. But this is my baby from uh, high school. That is awesome. awesome, man. That's amazing. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. It, yes, fun stuff. So uh, now, I, I think John Five might be muted. John or John, you yeah. muted yourself. Uh -oh. You <laughs> muted yourself. Push the mute button. At, down, down, down the down bottom. The, down the bottom. So down, down the bottom, the bottom of your screen. There's a mute, mute. button. Mute. There you. There but it says. <laughs> but it says unmute. I don't. It says unmute. But it says yeah. unmute. <laughs> Sorry, I. You know, I was. I was just farting. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't light, don't don't light a match. Yeah, right. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <Get back. laughs> no, Mark, that is amazing. Uh, that is thanks. beautiful. Um, next time. Next time, I'm. In your neck of the come woods, I'll come by yeah, and do a little picking on there. We're going to talk tillies and, uh, and fun stuff with guitars. That's my whole <laughs> world when I'm sitting at home. But listen, Absolutely. I, nice to be a part Me of all too. this. And I, I thank you guys. And uh, uh, just just so happy to, that everything's going well for you. You know, and This is a great new format for, for the show. And uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of other uh, guests along the way in this format. So... Yeah, Good luck certainly. with the next five and 10 years, et cetera, and all the other stuff that we'll end up buying. 
I don't know, man. If we, if we don't start making some money doing this, I'm going to have to quit at some point in time. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I said when I started a long time ago. You start collecting more and more stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. We're going to have to do the Kiss My Collectibles telethon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the big goat yeah, exactly. Poor Mark needs something and yeah. and a and a, a coffee as well. There you go. <laughs> so that right. that's the thing for life. You never ever end up with more money because the more money that comes in, you just spend that that sheer amount on more kiss stuff. So your, oh, yeah. your bank balance is always just going. Oh. There you go. <laughs> hey, this is not math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. So Not both, <laughs> both John Humphrey and Mark Slaughter have both toured with Kiss. So not to put both of you on the spot, but can either one of you share a funny story uh, that you remember from the reunion tour, the Hot in the Shade tours? Go ahead, John. I'm right behind <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the greatest story, but uh, the Nixons, we opened you know, on the reunion tour, which right. was just the coolest thing because it's back in makeup and, you know, they're back and uh, we joined like uh, the second week of the tour. So it was the great show. It was Cleveland and Pittsburgh and they did four nights at Madison Square Garden. We opened the last night, wow, but they right. uh, it wasn't Madison Square Garden. I can't remember the venue, but they put our dressing room right up front there in the backstage area. So each guy one at a time just would sort of stumble into our dressing room. And, and my best one is Ace is there. Uh, he comes stumbling in. He sits down. He grabs the deli tray, he's, the fruit deli tray, sits it in his lap. He starts eating, and he looks at me. I'm just sitting there. He's like, what's up, Curly? And I'm like, just hanging out, man. And he goes, this isn't my dressing room, is it? Went, no, no, it's, it's the mix is broken, but you're welcome to hang out, man. Make yourself at home. He goes, uh, it's, no, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. I thought it was oh, a great thing. Great. I tried to convince him to hang out, but he wasn't having it. <laughs> That is a great oh, that's story. Great. That's great. great. You got anything, Mark? I know you. Uh, you you know, know, to to me, back in the day, with you know, uh, it was the hot in the shade tour. Obviously, um, you know, it was it, it was just a lot of fun. Our our band was taken off, and and those guys, Kiss, treated us like gold. Uh, after we did one month with them, which is the first leg of the tour, um, they sent us. We went into our dressing room. We came off the stage, and they said please join us for the rest, for the next leg. We'd love to have you. And they had two bottles of Dom and they all signed the card. And it's just, you know, they're a class act. And I, this one thing about kiss and how they run their organization and the way they do everything is just very, very classy. And I have a lot of respect for that. And I learned a lot from those guys, you know, that, uh, you know, you can run it as a business, but be a human being through it, you know? Sure. So, uh, I actually, you know, that's just what things. Yeah. Pat has it. Pat has everything. Yeah, I go here, Pat. Hold on Pat, to this. Pat yeah. is the slaughter and Mark Slaughter curator. It's Archivist. that's right. Yeah. The, yeah. It's amazing going to his house and looking through all of that stuff, especially if you're a huge fan, like you know I've always been. You know, looking uh, through all that. That's great. Looking, Thanks. looking through those note, those notepads of the the lyrics from Revolution. It, oh yeah. You know, blows me away every time you know never, uh, never thanks to, you know. it's you know what it's it's such a joy to be in this industry every time i'm you know writing or playing a song or listening to music i just go this is what i love i do what i love and i'm so blessed and decide to be able to do what i love and and the memories and the friends i met along the way and you know the kiss fans have always been you know I, we've been uh, uh embraced by so many of them so you know i'm just very very thankful that's awesome, man. Tell us, tell us what Gene would think, though. Gene will say, "Listen, we want you to to sell more things, but make sure I get an item for my house for my own collection because I need it." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, is, is a friend of mine, you know, Chad John, uh, went to Gene. Says, "Yeah, I know John Five. He goes, "I knew John when he was John Four. And now look at <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true. You know, I <laughs> I have known I've known Gene for a long time, and I would always call Gene and be and ask him advice because he gave the best advice right and like all the time and i was just with him not too long ago and he he said something to me and i was like "Fuck! why did i not think of that it's because i'm not gene simmons but he uh he, i asked him 
should I join Marilyn Manson or should I stay with David Lee Roth? And he, I remember he sat back in his chair and then he <laughs> sat up and he goes, join Marilyn Manson. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, cause I remember calling my father and he said, you know, I would ask someone you respect and, and appreciate in the business that knows the business. And uh, I've always asked Gene for advice. Uh, and did, Gene, he's, did Gene expand on that or he just said, that's all he said on it? No, then John well, yeah, stood he, up and yeah. walked out. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no <laughs> conversation. He just, him a, yeah. he just sent him a fax and that's all I could fit on the fax page. It's wonderful because, you know, he's he's done it you know and i've always asked people for advice that have done something you know like if you're gonna do a job or something you ask the person that sure. does that job all the time advice and that's what mm -hmm. i've done with gene and it's it's just great <laughs> it's awesome. yeah. uh, i also great. want to point out and and i should have remembered this because i was talking uh to pat and carol about this last night when we were testing out this software but today apparently according to carol who just says in the in the chat, Pat's wife is the 30th anniversary of the Spin My Life single. Wow. 30 I years even, See, that's the thing I don't know. Paddle call up. You know what today is? And I go, no. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mark throws something out and Pat's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't even throw it out. He just says, hey, I got a couple boxes here. I don't know what's in it. You want to go through? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> what was it? And, and he finds some things. He goes, you're not going to believe what I have. And I go, what do you have? And he goes, I have the letter when you left Vinny that the record company picked up your option. I go, I had no idea it was in that box. I've so, I mean, that. he's got like all these crazy things. I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I've yeah. seen that. It's amazing. So, yeah. So happy anniversary to you too, Mark. Well, thanks, man. Happy thanks. anniversary. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice to be a part of it all. Yeah. I want to tell I want to tell a, a cool a, a cool Slaughter story here real quick because Slaughter was actually my last concert that I went to before COVID happened. Mm. Oh wow! Um, but you know I, I I've been a fan. I've seen the videos on MTV being a kid, and uh, right before the, the guys went on stage, they took just one shot. There wasn't a lot of partying backstage. I mean, I think the biggest party they had backstage was when the deli tray got that. There was like a mad rush to like get the fresh bread. Or, <laughs> and anyway, regardless, but I just remember that the, the band was kind of all around the world doing a shot and, and Mark kind of looked at me, he goes, do you want in on this? And I just remember just like cheersing it up to them. And like, I flashed back to like, you know, MTV lost weekend. And I, I was right. like, I was with that same band and it was just, it, it was, it, it was so cool. And, and I wouldn't have gotten an opportunity had I not met Pat and Jason through, through this show. So uh, it, it's something that it, it, it was, it's something that's really cool, and I think about it often because I've I watched this band on this show for so long, and yeah. there I was with them. We're yeah, just so. regular. I, you know, I, it's one thing. It was so funny. We, I think, we're just kind of the regular guys of this industry. We really never were about the show. It was just about the music, you know. And it was just kind of like just go out and play. We're the guys next door that did good, and we would bring people back and. And, and Gene would come back in the room and he'd say, listen, Shannon's coming to the show in two days. So that's a warning. Keep all your whores and prostitutes out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then he'd come back the next day. You have one day and then she's coming. <laughs> so, yeah. And we would go to the other side and we would have like 300 people. But it was really one of those things of bringing the fans in to have fun with us. So. I really never even thought of a separation of the of our band to the people. I think it's just one of those things that we just all have a good time. It's entertainment that we all can enjoy, and we get entertained just by being part of the, you know, the circus. No pun intended. You know. Mm. Yeah. No, for real. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, wow, lots of good discussions. Lots mm. of good stories, man. Yeah, it's awesome. absolutely. Mark, so, tell, tell, tell John Five about the very first show that you ever played with Kiss. I don't think – he may not know this. The very first show we played with Kiss was um, May 4th, correct? That's correct. May, May, May 4th in <laughs> Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> yeah, I, he's, my, he's my reassurance. Uh, May 4th, 1990. But get this. The band never played live. We put the, all the music together in the studio. And we wrote everything. We had our video in the can. We had already shot 
part of, uh, we also shot uh, Fly the Angels in which before we even toured with, with uh, Kiss, the, the wardrobe girl went to Gene so that I could borrow his bomber jacket because that's what I wanted was a bomber jacket. And she goes, I know a guy is about your size. He'll let you use it for the video, but you have to give it back to him. And I go, who's that? Well, Gene, I said, well, I'm going to be on tour with him in a month. So that's great. So he let me use his jacket. That's his jacket in the flight. Wow. Angels video. That's, oh, wow. I had no idea. That's a great stump the trunk. That's yeah, right. that's, that's right. Right. right, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So then we get out on stage, and the very first show we ever played was with Kiss in Lubbock, Texas. We do the show. We walk into our dressing room, and lo and behold, the CEO and the president of Chrysalis Records was in the, our dressing room with Gold Records. And mind you, MTV was there because it was the big Kiss tour starting. And we had our first gold record on our very first show. So it was like, I turned to Dana and I said, I think we did something right. <laughs> no yeah. kidding, right? Oh. You know? That's great. But, uh, what a great story. It was crazy. Yeah. So it was crazy. But, and then, you know, we toured with them for, you know, pretty much the whole tour just for a few weeks. And we went to uh, Europe. But other than that, we, we did the whole tour, in, including Madison Square Garden. Yeah, which was just crazy. You were driving in the back, and you're like, "This is just like Jimmy Page right here." Don't you feel like Robert Plant? This is awesome, you know. Yeah. In the limo, going through the backside, you know, song remains the same. So, fanboy. so Mark, were you? Did you guys play the? Because the first time I saw him was in Connecticut. I was on tour, and we had a day off, and I, we were playing in New York City, and I drove to Connecticut. Did, mm -hmm. did you play Connecticut? Uh, Pat? Connecticut. Yeah, Pat? we did. Did they play Connecticut? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me get, let yeah, me get we did. the itinerary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We played uh, Connecticut. So I'm driving to the show frantically, you know, and like, you know, New York traffic and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like just freaking out. I'm like freaking out. And I get backstage and, and I'm like, where do I go? Where do I go? You know, I'm like, you know, a Wayne's world with the past, you know, I'm like <laughs> running everywhere, trying to figure out where to go. And I see Doc McGee and he goes, uh -huh. go through that door really quick. And I just run through the door and then hold on because I run through the door and they're all there. They're all there. And and this picture was taken. If you guys can see that. Oh, oh look at that! That's awesome. That's so great. Uh, it was pretty funny. Pretty <laughs> cool. Great. But uh, and then they went on. They got on stage, and I was like, "Oh my god, I couldn't believe it! It was just uh, that's great." Perfect it was. Timing. It was. It was wild. But I'm not sure of like. I'm so bad with years. I mean, but I'm. Not sure of what year that was. Uh, you know, ninety eight. Ninety eight. Yeah, ninety eight. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I could tell you by the year. I'm really Andrew can yeah, I tell you anything about <laughs> from but just you a were, snippet of a photo. So. But were you ninety six? We were ninety. So okay. we were the hot in the shade. We okay, were forever, yeah, 90, yeah. forever, okay. wherever was their big hit in uh, the Michael the Bolton song at the time, and uh, and then w during that time when we were on the road. We get a call from Jimmy Iovine and says, listen, we're doing uh, Bill and Ted's uh, movie and we'd oh, like for you to yeah. record a track. So, of course, we're like, we'll do it. And and Gene's like, what do you mean, Jimmy? Jimmy called you. Well, we need to get it. So it ended up, <laughs> or they ended up getting a track. In it. <laughs> but we, we took a day off and Dana and I went into a Days Inn hotel to write the song. And we realized we didn't have anything. We went to Radio Shack and got a little mini uh, um like cassette recorder and we wrote shout it out in one, um, in one that. afternoon wow that, that night and then we're like okay so our next day off we're gonna fly to vancouver and we wanted to record a little mountain where you know aerosmith and brian adams made all those great records so we ended up going in there and then i went into the studio next and sang on christy Steele's record during it all i mean it was just like mm. everything was just happening you know but uh yeah that was this crazy time that's wonderful. Bro, so cool. Great story. In an evening. That's that's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, it's like shout out. That's very chat. close. 
<laughs> yeah, that's very close to a song I wrote. <laughs> that's very, yeah. And we said, well, we didn't really think about it. I guess it's just subliminally in the back of our minds. Just shout it out. That's very close. I go, it's not close enough. You can't do anything. <laughs> and we say, and that's so funny. When we were out with Gene, it was like, it was so funny. We were like, we'd be walking through the backstage area and we'd go, Grandpa, and you go, listen, I'm not your grandpa. When my kid's old enough to, I'll be your grandpa. But right now, I'm just Gene. And the next day, next day, Tim would go, Grandpa. And he goes, I'm not your grandpa. <laughs> but, you know, it's like Gene has an incredible sense of humor. Um, I'll never forget the best laugh I think I've probably ever had was with Gene. He came in to watch our home video that we did, the in the beginning video, and he came in and watched it. It was the uncensored one where the girls had no tops on in the end. And there's Tim with two girls like this with their tops off. And and Tim, he turns, Gene turns to Tim and he goes, So Tim, when Sarah sees that, what are you gonna tell her? And Tim goes, I'm going to tell her that Dana made me do it. And he, <laughs> he cried laughing. He cried and laughed and laughed and laughed. And then he says, hold on, hold on a second. And he goes off the bus and then he drags Paul on the bus. And he goes, Mark, just go to the, what? go to the good part, go to the good part. And then with the same thing. Now, Tim, say what you said before. <laughs> I told Dana made me do it. And, and then Paul's laughing. So, you know, those are the, those are the times that I, I certainly uh, enjoy the laugh and, and the, the good times of that more than anything, you know, more and those so are, than just the shows. That's just the stuff you have a good time with your your peers, you know. Those yeah. were the stories I was asking about earlier. Those yeah. are great stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, <laughs> great funny stories. stuff, man. Yeah. So, mm. Well, uh, John, John Humphrey, tell tell them the story about you and the the merchandise from the reunion tour. The merchandise. Where you, where you got all the merchandise, and you're like sitting there in in, in the garden with all the merchandise all <laughs> spread around you. I don't know. You'll have to remind me of the story. I don't remember the story. So you you told me a story that when you first got on the road with Kiss and you're doing those shows with them at the garden. That every night you didn't care where you were, you'd buy all this merchandise. But oh, it yeah. had gotten to a point where yeah. you had gotten so much in so little time. Oh that yeah, you were in an off day. You were in the hotel room and it was spread around you. <laughs> okay, like you were. Like you yes, were, uh, like you were, yeah. Uh, my you know, American Express got car got maxed out for that run, so we're <laughs> oh on tour, <laughs> watching all the shows, and and uh, like, there were multiple cities sold out, and they would alternate opening bands, and so but the passes were always good, so. We spent a week in New York doing all those shows and going to the shows and hanging out. But I definitely, yeah, I was buying stuff just ridiculous. Yeah. You I was so have, excited. You still have all that stuff? I still have. Yes, I still have it all. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Your per diem amazing. just went right to Kiss Merch, right? You <laughs> yeah. didn't even, and, didn't and, even and, pay and, your and, account. And, it just. And then, so, <laughs> that's yeah. it. The bank balance is just. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm not getting any more money out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I sure ate a lot of hot dogs in New York. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of top ramen on the bus there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Yeah, thank you. So, what do we want to do next? Does anybody have anything they want to show? Does anybody want to. Well, what do we want to do? I'm gonna pop up uh, my one of my oldest friend Danny Dabs, and I'm gonna bring our buddy John Hadges in here so we can fill up the room a little bit more because we don't have enough people on the screen. You know <laughs> what, guys? I gotta I gotta jump, but I'm gonna be like the Waltons and mm. say good night, Jason. Good night, Joe. Good night, Nicholas. Good night, John. Good night, Andrew. Good night, Mark. Good night, Pat. <laughs> night night. I have no, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what the Waltons are. Good night, dumb boy. Night. Well, there you go. I know. It's, well, <laughs> I was it's waiting. On, for that. You, you can get the reruns just like he huh? And trust me, I'm sure John's That's watching right. that as he as he gets off. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to say congratulations and happy anniversary. And you know, I love the show and everybody on it. And uh, it's great to talk to Mark and Andrew. Yeah, it's great absolutely. to see you back and Pat and everybody. And John, yeah, absolutely. Thank, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, John. For, for Very cool. Hey, Thanks, John. hey, John, don't yeah. forget Eddie's ready to make your strap. Just, just got to get that design going. 
Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so busy. I'm like doing nothing but like playing guitar. <laughs> there you go. Start, we'll get started. That's what I'm doing. Just, exactly. Just before you go, John, there's a lot of Kiss fans at, at looking at, at the top right of your screen at that Kiss Alive poster up there. Mm. That's right. You uh, want to talk about it? You want to have a quick, very quickly before you go, do you want to just say something about that one when you got it? The Oh, the, the, the band? Yeah. Kiss Army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the Kiss thing. Army. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, <laughs> that's the one. I mean, it's uh, super cool and uh, it's on a bed sheet. And uh, I guess that, um, whatchamacallit, Jay said that he made it. Oh, wait, I'm terrible. I'm holding my computer and I'm all crooked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. You have an earthquake. <laughs> Why is this not working? Anyway, so, um, yeah, so he made it on his like the bed or something like that with a bed sheet. And he said, you know, they came up with the name and then uh, it was like the summer of 75 or maybe even earlier. Yeah, and wow. uh, that was, it's the first thing that the kiss army was ever, you know, on or anything like that was right there. So uh, wow, pretty cool. Right. Wait, wait, wait a second, John. What does it feel like to hold that knowing that you've seen that so many times before? I know it's, it was just, it's so weird because I saw that picture so many zillions of times of that. these kids holding it. And uh, wow, it's just wonderful. And I love the autographs. You know, I won't try to zoom in on it, but the autographs are just wonderful because they got it signed at the show. Um, you know, and it's just like it's just such a piece of history mm. of the beginning of the Kiss Army. And uh Amazing. It's just weird, and uh, I appreciate it though so much, and mm. and uh, it's it's just going to be in a nice safe home that is kissed every night. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! <laughs> that's awesome! Wow. That's awesome! John, I for for me, man, I want to I want to thank you for you know reaching out that you know when you did a long time ago about coming on the show and being a part of it. We've had so many good times laughing and mm -hmm. recording this show and i just really appreciate you being a part of it as much as you have and thank uh, you i look forward to recording the next episode on whatever we do next all right well thank you guys great to see everybody all right brother good to see you too, see you, man. You too. all right take care right. bye-bye bye, -bye. Yeah, okay. bye, -bye. i'm gonna real quick bring in one of my oldest friends and then also one of our Canadian brothers who are massive Kiss fans. Uh, Everybody get ready to take a drink. All right. Well, well <laughs> I'll, I'll, bring him, I'll bring him in last. So <laughs> I'm going to bring up our buddy John Hadges. How are we doing, guys? Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Yep. If you've watched happy, happy fifth anniversary. Oh, thank you, my friend. Thank um, you. It's definitely a love-hate relationship with this show because – before you put the show on, I thought I knew it all. And then one day I wake up and I'm like, oh, I got it all. I know it all. And then like the show's on and like, what? There's there's a kiss under the spindle. There's a kiss over the spindle. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And, then, the days there. Yeah, and then and then from working 70 hours a week, I went to work in 90 hours a week so I could support the habit. <laughs> so, so, so I blame you guys for it. Definitely. You're very welcome, my friend. So I think that that didn't just happen to people that were watching the show. Oh, that man. happened to us on the show, too. You know, Andrew's definitely. vinyl collection grew from this to you know, out the room somewhere, you know, yeah. you, you guys I mean, know those little, those little DJ cases that you, that they would store vinyl in where you could store like, I don't know, like 25 or 30 vinyl in one of yeah. those DJ cases. Yeah. I, I had one of those and I made it look like the Kisteria set. And when the show started, all my vinyl fit in there mm -hmm. and I had room. <laughs> And then now you, you can't see now. I can't move the computer, but I have over 300 kiss. Just it's amazing. Yeah. From nice. just being in the show but, I mean, and, and all that stuff. But that, that kind of thing is still continues to this day, even on our, you know, on our Facebook page, they're constantly, someone's showing a bit of merchandise and then suddenly someone shows this other one. I'm like, oh my God, now, now my book's not complete. It's like, damn yeah. it. Like, yeah. you know, I, gotta, I, didn't gotta, know you had, I didn't know you had a book. Oh, Where really? Can I get yeah. it? You have a book? <laughs> <laughs> First time hearing of it. And so, Andrew, I, I can't wait for uh, Live 96 to come out. Should be fantastic, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Should be fantastic. All right, you're talking about the shows. Um, I was actually at Tiger Stadium, mm -hmm. not the Weenie Roast, obviously, but I was at Tiger Stadium. And I remember when tickets were going on sale, I was just like panicking. And I, I called one of my friends who happens to be a scalper here in Toronto. 
And I said, I don't care what you do. You just got to get me the two best tickets for, for Tiger Stadium. Mm. And I told my younger brother who had, he had just missed ki seeing Kiss in, in, in Dynasty. So he hadn't seen the original four. So I said to him, I go, we're going to Tiger Stadium, me and you. And he calls me back three days later and he goes, um, I got your third row uh, <laughs> right between right between uh, Paul and Ace. And he goes, but they're a little pricey. And I said, just come to the restaurant, <laughs> drop them off, and I'll give you the money. And when the lights went off, my God, it just, you everybody started rushing down. All the chairs were destroyed. They were getting thrown all over the place. And it was just madness, just mm. absolute madness being up there at the front. Wow. But I just sent you I just sent you a text. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. Do you have your drink? Crazy. Do you have your drinks ready? Everybody get your drinks ready because here it comes. <laughs> I don't have one. I'm bringing it. Uh, you know, some, some people may not know if they don't watch the show. Mark, you know, you probably don't know this, but uh, I'm bringing in one of my oldest and dearest friends. And I've mentioned him on this show so many times. I've known him since I was 11 years old. He was the only kiss friend I had growing up. Um lived in the next county over but i've mentioned his name so many times that everybody's turned it into a drinking game so ladies and gentlemen okay. danny dabs is with us my spike patron <laughs> bottle is at the ready <laughs> there you go right that's a, that's good old milo's tea for me yeah. Oh, yeah. Water, <laughs> water here pat water here so <laughs> so danny how are you buddy Good. Good to see you, my brother. Yes, brother. Uh, Danny, as, as you can see behind him, is a collector as well, but not in Kiss anymore. He he does these uh, massive, I don't know what the hell, action figures. What what Beautiful. what are they called? Beautiful. What are they, Danny? I know they're expensive. Well, these are uh, hot toys, collectibles. Uh, right. If uh, you ever check out some of those uh, YouTube videos from Six Scale Network or Justin's collection, there's a whole culture out there in Asia now of people who collect action figures and the head sculpts, the costumes and these things are just so realistic that um, since I'm a Marvel collector and I love uh, stuff like the Terminator and uh, stuff like that, uh, these things look just like you brought the movie into your house and you, you know, miniaturized it. Um, one of my holy grails was this endoskeleton of the Terminator behind me and it's die cast. The, the pistons, the, the hoses and everything on it are so realistic and they move and function just like they should if you, you know, were, uh, uh, if you had it in front of you. Mm. Look at those mm. things, man. I, I know they're expensive and I've been there. I've seen them in person. They, they are quite impressive, quite impressive. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, way more expensive than, uh, you know, regular, regular kiss merchandise. So yeah. mm. There's a lot of engineering that goes into them and a lot of sculpting and uh, artwork and they're hand painted. Right. You know? So for a production yeah. item to be hand painted, that's, you know, you get it looking this good. That's, that's quite a, you know, a feat. That, uh, that display case behind Danny there is the original display case that he had when I came over to his house for the first time when I was 11 years old and saw it was filled yeah. with kiss merchandise. Wow. Man, if, this, if this display case could talk, Jason, I know, I know, man. <laughs> you know, there's been so much cool shit go through that display. I case. know, dude. I know, dude. Everything. So. But uh, anyway, happy fifth anniversary, dude. Thank you, this, my brother. This Absolutely. is awesome. I, I knew you would be so successful at this because your passion for for what you love and kiss and vinyl and everything is just it's amazing. and It's very inspiring. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you. Love you, brother. Uh, I, of course, that just uh, whatever the definition of successful means. It, successful means we have you know, a few people watching our show. That successful, successful on this side of the dirt is where it's at right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Magic yeah. Is going on. So, so we are we are all doing pretty darn good right, right now. You're right, so, right. You are I'm right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can I bring to one more? <laughs> so what happened to him? Can I bring? Is Dave Scott in here? He's got to be. I thought I saw him pop in. But he's not here now. Where'd he go? Guys, I'm I'm dying to see what's in the box, by the way. Oh, he said uh he said need to reboot will return. Yeah, do we want to show some stuff? Mark, uh, yeah. you wanna hang around for that, or have you had enough of this? <laughs> yeah, well well, actually I have to finish up a track that sure. I have to send off. 
Um, so uh, I'm going to have to get to work. This Absolutely. is my working time. It's crazy as this is 10 o'clock to three in the morning. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Mark, but, uh, tell, tell me about the song that you just finished. Uh, the song I just finished is that, uh, is if you're a Gino, fin Gino Vanelli fan. Oh yes. Um, I actually, uh, a friend of mine, Josh and high. it's crazy. All my buddies from high school, Josh, uh, Egan, as well as ginger fish were the drummers of my school. Those are the two guys. And, and Josh called me up. Uh, Ginger obviously played with uh, John later and uh, uh, he plays in Zombie and as well as with Marilyn Manson. But uh, Josh uh, started doing the studio stuff. So he's kind of got that jazz fusion feel. And he and, and uh, Jimmy Haslip, which is um, the gentleman who played with uh, Bruce Kulick with Blackjack, yeah. Um, he and, played and on bass for the, the Yellow Jackets. Bass, yeah. Absolutely. And Yellow yeah. Jackets. And he played bass on this Gino Vanelli song. And what it mm -hmm. is, is it's a tribute to Mark Craney, this incredible drummer that really made a difference in Josh's life. He reached out to me and said, will you do this track? Just play guitar on it or maybe sing. And I said, sure. So we ended up uh, tracking the whole thing. Joe Vanelli played keys. I sang on it. Uh, Georgia uh, Vani uh, sang on it as well. And it's just the most amazing track for me because it's kind of where I came from as, as a geeky musician kid. Um, and uh, it's available uh, through Copa Room Records. And uh, it's out there uh, posted on my Facebook as well. So uh, check it out. And uh, again, I had a blast doing it. So it's one thing off my bucket list for sure. Incredible. Very cool. Which which track was it? What's the what's brother the title? to brother, brother to brother, and I played very all the cool. guitar on it, which was very challenging because you know when you become a lead singer, you just kind of stand there with a the guitar. You don't have to, you know, really rip like I did when I was a kid. So I went back in to go into my jazz roots, and it was a blast to to kind of go back and relearn a lot of the stuff that I uh, used to know. Mm. Cool. So that's it. Cool. Also, there's a band called Rock Sugar. Thank you. There's also a band called Rock Sugar. Uh, Jess Harnell um, has a yeah. uh, uh, all the does the Animaniacs. If you're into any of that uh, Warner Brothers stuff, he did a mashup of a bunch of uh, songs, and I think they they just released that on YouTube uh, today, actually. So uh, look that up. And in the meantime, happy anniversary, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in person or possibly in uh, your uh, Hollywood square boxes <laughs> and, uh, and uh, until I'm then, uh, in, until then, man, thank you so much. And again, this, this is such a huge part of all our lives and uh, I appreciate you uh, keeping it uh, alive for everybody. So well, Mark, uh, much thank love you. to you all. Yeah. You too, man. Thank you for taking your time out of your evening to just, you know, step in and, and talk uh, yeah. and tell some great stories. My and, pleasure, uh, man. My I've pleasure. Been, I've been a, a fan my entire adult oh, there life. There you go. So, look, look at that. Look at, look at that. That's been on the bedroom doorknob since it has. 1990. Wow. That's right, buddy. That's yeah. unbelievable. That was my get busy thing on my doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Don't come in. <laughs> if you see that, I'm watching Kiss My Wife. Don't come <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Mark. Hope to see you soon. Happy Mark. anniversary. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Take, care. Take, care. Take, care. Take, care. Take care, man. Bye bye. All right. So let's bring our final guest that's sitting back in the holding room. I had to boot him to get uh, John Five back in here. Do we have to bring him on? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Joe, you, you tell me. Do we should we bring this guy on? Can you bring the other Dave on? Okay, yeah, I'll right. bring the other Dave. Yeah, on. Right. The other Dave. <laughs> All right, our friend from down under, somewhere close to Nicholas. Uh, well, I don't know. If Nowhere he's near me. Nowhere near Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the same country. Yeah. Yeah. Our friend, Mr. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Hey. 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 You're He's right. muted. You're I muted. Don't know. How, how, how is it daytime for me and nighttime for you? <laughs> Unmute yourself, Dave. That's it's exactly like how far away he is. <laughs> Dave, there, there you we go. go. On, on the other side of the planet where the sun, yeah. there's no sun. That's how close they are. <laughs> so, all right. So now that all the kiss dorks are here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, do, does anybody have any stuff? I mean, I guess we should probably do a little bit of kind of our normal show. Does anybody have any new stuff that they've gotten recently that they want to show? I've got that item. That's new. John yeah. Humphrey, go. I'll take John Humphrey for the block. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so mine, uh, it's a vinyl okay. LP. It's actually uh, the test pressing for the Elder. What? Oh, that is garbage. Put it, in a, put it in a box and send it to me. Yeah, that's why when any, that's why we said, does anybody have anything? John Harvey was like, I, I do. I do. I, I have, have something. Got a screen here. Look at that. You're full screen. Wow. Buddy. You've got the date there. Nice. HRN. Wow. So anyway, that's yeah, it's for the elder. Look at that. Test pressing. Unbelievable. Wow. When yeah, added to the collection. Wow. Pri so how did you come about that? John? That's what I was just asking. Private yeah. deal or eBay, you luck up or what? Discogs, actually. This no what? Yeah, one of my late night, you know, just oh looking around and I found it. It was a pretty good deal. <laughs> I and I asked you, for the Jason, photos. Hurry up and, and bid on it. I know. <laughs> Discogs, man. John's Discogs up at four crazy. in the morning. Refresh. Discogs. Refresh. Refresh. <laughs> refresh. <laughs> Bye. And refresh. then I messaged Joe, and I'm like, what do you think? It, it was a different deal, but I messaged Joe, and like, so this is the situation. Is this legit yeah. or not? Or do, what, do you think I should do this? You know? The guy doesn't have a PayPal account, but he wants me to send some money to an offshore you know, a third, legit, party out, it? third party That's out right. of state check. It seems like a pretty cool deal, but it's Dynasty from Peru. You know, <laughs> he says he's a Nigerian prince. Should I trust him? I don't know. You think it's okay? I think so. Yeah, that sounds legit to me. Yeah. Spend money now. I yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Right, done. Done. There's, there's a there's a radio show here in Cleveland that. Uh, that one of the hosts got a uh, an email from one of those Nigerian princes, and he printed it out and took it to the police. I was like, "Is this real?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That is hilarious. All right, who who uh, who's up next? No, nobody. I got something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did Look I at... see? This catalog from the other day. Oh yes, uh, yeah. yeah I, I got those cat. Oh, I should have gotten that and shown them those catalogs that I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show those again, show those again. So Danny's got the the remote control van there. You but put it full screen, so no, just, yeah, I'm doing it right now. Oh god, I'm mean, not the remote control, the model, the model van. van. Oh, yeah, god. sorry, Hadges. Yeah. Sorry, so, if John Five had have stuck around, I had this to show you. Oh, cool. He would oh, appreciate cool. those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool stuff. Play them in the back of the draggy look. I yeah, just, I got those, uh, Andrew. I got those uh, the catalogs, the seventy nine and eighty catalogs that have the 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 AMT catalogs that the vans are in. Oh, nice! I just for like three dollars a piece. So. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, look at those. those. It's the whole set. Oh, they're huge in the seventies. Those are awesome, man. Wow. They're really cool. Whoa. The only, Whoa. the only, the bad part about these is the the eBay auction. He mismeasured them. He said they were twenty by thirty. So I go, okay, cool. That's a standard size frame, but they're actually um, twenty four by thirty. So like, I don't. I know have a to... solution for that. Yeah. Nicholas, can you tell him how to fix it? That's right. <laughs> so, now they stay on frame. Yeah, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> what else, Joe? You got some vinyl, don't you, buddy? Yeah, I have a little bit of vinyl, but I actually got these in the mail today. I got them from um, those are nice, Danny. Uh, mm. yeah, from somebody off of the off the page. So here is a. Hold on. Where are you to get you big? There you where, are. Where am I? There you are. You're you're perfectly fine Ooh. now. Yeah. Oh, it's so, missing missing yeah. the top. That's the yeah, one I wanted this, to buy. None of the so the this printing. is the. Oh, are you the one that bought that? I am, I guess, the one that I Son bought it. Because <laughs> I, I chimed in and said, sold. And he said, already sold. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> yep. So that's the one. So Korean pressing of Hotter Than L. Here's what's really cool about this one, too. Check this out. So it has this sweet oh, insert. Nice. Yeah, nice. nice. Wow. Super cool. Very nice. Yeah. 
yeah. Can I so, can I ask Joe? Um, because I looked at a lot of the South Korean pressings um for Queen stuff that I was collecting, yeah. and they all they all said on Discogs that they're unofficial. Does that mean that that's is that official or unofficial? See, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know on that one. It you know, it for all the world seems official, and especially with like an insert like that, uh, you yeah. know, you yeah. I, I don't know. There, there are some Korean pressings that are official that there were licensed. Mm. There are also plenty of pirated copies in Certainly. Korean, and yeah. those are mainly the ones that have the, uh, you know, monochrome colored covers mm. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you'll see them in blue, all blue, blue or red. all yeah, red, yeah. or yeah, green, yeah, yeah. or something yeah. like that. Those are unofficial. Those are those are pirate copies, but I believe that is official. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, so it has the lyrics on the back too in English, which yeah. is cool. Mm. So what are, what what have they removed from the front? I just you showed it up quickly, but it looks like something's missing. It does, yeah, it doesn't have Japanese, Japanese printing. Oh, they yeah. took off the Japanese writing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Do we know how they sound in comparison to the um, the the counterfeit uh, South Korean copies? Do they sound the same, or it's like I'm, you know, like sure, sound? I'm he doesn't sure know. That... He doesn't own a turntable, so he just has he just collects the vinyl. So. <laughs> 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 Nicholas. Right. <laughs> Nicholas uses them for door stoppers, so it doesn't yeah, really matter. Exactly. No, John, I think I think most of the the pirated pirated copies use really worn out old plates that they've bought out of the back of something, you know, mm -hmm. somebody's stolen out of a pressing plant. I think they're worn out plates, but I think on these official pressings, they're you know mm. they're, they're pressed decently. I, yeah. you know, I don't know about top quality, but they're pressed decently. So would you agree with that, John Humphrey? Yes. Or, yeah, absolutely. Okay. John, do, you, okay. do you have that hotter than hell? John? I do. I do. Yeah. Very cool. What do John, you think? Official, non official? I think it's official. I do too. Yeah. I would think so too. With the way that it's put together compared to those others, I would say so as well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Who else has got some stuff to show? I got a few things. Show something. I was, I've, got, I've got a few ads in, unsurprisingly, because that's what I've been collecting mostly at the moment. So I'll show a couple of these ones, like this one, a nice. Um, record land ad there which is from the the solo albums oh yeah very nice yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah and then there's this a cool one which is a dutch one when you first see it you think it's it's double platinum but it's actually for the solo albums and double platinum because you can oh, see cool. a gene there so yeah that's <laughs> in brock music aggress yeah whatever he, whatever it says <laughs> but i'm not going to try and read that that wasn't uh, bad that was yeah, pretty no, more, more more dutch which was this this lovely one Ooh. It's a hard wow. to find one. Yeah. Uh, and this really cool one from Casablanca, which I really like, which oh, has yeah. um, like Kiss, Angel, I don't know who Masakella are, and Buddy yeah. Miles. Yeah. Wow. So this, from that, and then the, the final one I've got is um, this is actually quite a hard to find uh, destroyer one from the industry. This one is actually only to radio stations. And I've got two of them too, because um, one was printed on a different paper. So I'm starting to get into that. Mm. Above, above the spindle, below the spindle of right of promo ads. Variations. <laughs> I know this is different. This is different GSM paper stock, you know. On the other one, so, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I've got recently. Some some nice vintage stuff, actually. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. This this is the part of the episode where every vagina dries. They are yeah. different paper stock. <laughs> I, I was just watching. <laughs> no, that, that's that's always when I talk. So. <laughs> I, was, I was watching the the viewer count drop as you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying the viewer count draws. I'm just saying every vagina <laughs> draws. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I know I'm pretty sure Andrew got these, and I think Pat's got a couple. But I was going to show these. Uh, actually, let me just get it out of the plastic. Are they the Japanese ones? Yeah, the Japanese ones. Yeah, I got double platinum, which is beautiful. It is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's beautiful. A con, yeah. And so then the because somebody said there was a different uh, ending on the Paul song for the best of the solos i bought that one too yeah you got to get that one so uh so yeah so what andrew and i are talking about are these japanese released they're mqa ultra hq cds they're uh hold on how do i make myself big here that's how you do it so the like each disc has a uh, an alternate version of a couple of songs uh, each disc each I, i'm pretty Pat? sure yeah that, that's what uh, my friend from uh, japan sent one to, to me right. and they were they were explaining uh, all the details of the of the of the CD. Well, I'm gonna have wow. to listen to them close. We know, like Andrew was saying, the end of "Take Me Away Together" is one. Uh, it it doesn't have a fade ending. It has a you know a cold. Hard stop. Yeah, it has a hard stop. So, but the the killers comes with the a tiny replica of the 
very hard to find sticker. Mm. Pretty, yeah. pretty unbelievable. And then it's also got, uh, you know, the, kind of the fold out booklet that, that came with it. Mm. Which looks great right really, for Sonic Boom. Right. right. <laughs> and then all, the, all the discs are green. I don't, I don't yeah. know why that is, but all the discs are green. But, uh, which uh, which it's it's good to mention that uh, they are MQA discs, right? MQA, uh, yeah, M MQA Ultra HQ CDs. You could still play these discs in regular disc players. Yeah. So, uh, but they are of a higher fidelity. <coughs> I understand. That's correct. So, uh, and so Andrew was talking about this one. This is the best of the solo albums, man, and it is just like mm, leaning. Yeah, it's cool. the other cover. But it comes with the alternate french covers so you yeah can, you can trade mm. these out if you want that's to. that's really cool yeah they're they're pretty excellent that's so cool and I then awesome. i got all those i didn't get smashes that's the only one i, yeah, didn't I was up. i was gonna say that you could skip on smashes because there's nothing in there well it does have the uh, inner sleeve in it I'll, i'm curious now if it has alternate tracks or yeah. so let's show real quick let me show um it's one of the flat. 900 mixes of X and Sex. Oh, though. yeah. Right, yeah. right. No, I, I, I think Gene sings Beth on that version. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, actually, guys, I, I'm glad you mentioned Beth because that's actually Dave Scott's favorite Kiss song is Beth. You can oh. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, those are the first words Dave Scott has uttered tonight, and they could not be more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So real quick, I'll just show double platinum, and it's oh, really just beautiful. unbelievable. You know, it's got the the that's extended more mirrors over. than the album. That's amazing. That's right. so they mirror. always do it right, man. They yeah. always yeah. do it right. I'm gonna song. I'm gonna be good at that just for doing coke off that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the inserts on this are the best. Yeah, the best. They're they're absolutely the best. So they did a replica of the sticker that goes on the back. Oh wow. Oh, so With all the song titles, all the song titles. It's really little bitty tiny. So yeah, here, here it is. Wow. For, don't for forget, rest. don't forget. Jason is nine foot twelve <laughs> tall. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's <laughs> these are all actual size titles. These are these are twenty four by thirty six posters. <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, I was thinking oh. it, it could have been really funny. Oh, you could be please. holding. Hold on, hold yeah, on, hold on. Awesome. You, you could hear. Oh, wait, hold on. What? You have to Where are you at, Andrew? Hold on. Can you can you pass that down to me? Can you can you can pass? pass it? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. 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 Oh, see, guys, he, it's actually regular size when he passes it down. To <laughs> 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 so when I hand it back to him now, this is so if I hand yeah, right. it back to him, back to you, Jason. Yeah, that was yeah. excellent. Yeah, you know, and then here's the tiny one. So, so yeah, so they made a tiny, tiny version of this. All the print is there. Like you can, like my eyes are old, but all the print. I know you're not going to be able to see it here, but it is all there. It's unbelievable. And then they did a miniature version of the platinum yeah. award. And then the best thing is they did a miniature version of the promo poster. If I don't tear it up. So I think this is Andrew's favorite poster of all time, maybe. It is. Yeah. It wow. Is. That's cool. So, Beautiful. So, and so that's pretty cool. For shits and giggles, I'll show smashes real quick. Listen, it's all shits and giggles, so someone giggles and shits. That's right. That's right. So here's smashes. They did smashes. There's not much to it. Uh, like mm. Andrew said, but they did reproduce the actual inner sleeve. Okay. And it's got, it's got all the lyrics on it. And so, you can actually put the CD inside the sleeve, right? That is correct. It's, it's, you can, <laughs> it's, a, it's a real inner sleeve. So there you go. So anyway, they're pretty cool. Um, CD, you can get them at CD Japan. I saw a couple of people ask where you can get them. CD Japan, if they're still available. Um, and, and just they the, the shipping method from CD Japan is is absolutely incredible. They do ship DHL mail, yep. and they actually offer you how you want your album packaged. I actually I pre-ordered the Iron Maiden record in the beginning of October, and then I ordered one of those CDs on a Friday from Japan, and the damn CD was here before the Iron Maiden CD that I pre-ordered from America. America. Like, what does that tell you? Yeah. Um, so the quality, the, the quality of the cardboard that they used on these things are just incredible. It's Super very heavyweight. Uh, the, the colors are vibrant. I mean, they really did a 
great job on these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well done. Really good. Mm-hmm. So, all right. What? Anybody else have anything? John? Yeah. So, so John's test pressing is impressive, but did anybody get the ten dollar? Jigsaw puzzle. Hit the horns. Hit the horns. <laughs> you gotta hit the horns. <laughs> hit it. Horns? Oh, oh yes, I didn't. I, what? You gotta stay off. Oh. No. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I've got it. I've got it as live in Facebook as well. There's 44 thumbs up and five thumbs down, and That's I reckon all right. they're all for Joe. <laughs> and I'm here for every bit of it. Yeah. Actually, I wondered if you'd done most of them. <laughs> yeah, I just thumbs down myself. Five thumbs down, huh? That's right. Yeah. I wonder which people don't like us. Oh, well. Well, only one of them was there before. Only four of them were there before I held up the $10 jigsaw. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Aww. Uh, Speaking oh, of merchandise, yeah. let's talk about the, uh, if we're all up for it, the, the latest piece of merchandise up on Kiss Online. Oh. oh. <sighs> <laughs> oh, wow, what a, a collective uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, a collective yeah. sigh from the entire crowd. So oh, well. for for my money anyway, I think the the set is cool, but wow, what an outrageous price. Yeah. Okay, I have some insight on that. Okay, let's get it. Let's hear it. I talked to Keith LaRue about this months ago. And he said that uh and I don't know if he wants me saying this, but it I don't think it's really that bad to 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 say this mm. because I think it kind of it it explains why that price is where it's at. They were supposed to get those made offshores uh, for a reduced price, and because of COVID, they were unable to do that. Mm. So they all had to be made in the United States, <laughs> in Los Angeles, and they had to be made in small batches. So we all know, Joe and you and I know, when mm. you print something in small batches, Nicholas knows the price goes way up. And that's why the, that's one of the reasons why they're so expensive. So the price but, 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 the quality goes down. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right. But before we continue the conversation, Rocco Del Duca says everybody thumbs up for Joe, and I agree. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see no. that, that comment come up. So that must not. Be I didn't right. say that either. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, Jason, so yeah. I think the coolest thing though is the box out of the whole set. I, right. I agree with yes. you. I yeah, mean, here's the thing. Yeah. You, I, I understand what they're doing because there are plenty of merchandise companies that are doing subscription based boxes where it's like forty nine dollars sure. a month and you get a bunch of little tchotchkes. Like I remember there was one where I got uh, it was a Rocco's Modern Life box and I got this mug, like a shirt, some socks and like a book. And I did mm. one for Bob's Burgers where I got like a, a I got a, a cookbook to, to make all of the Bob's Burgers. And you get like a, it's a, it's subscription based and you're supposed to get something different every month. I think and Marvel did that for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Marvel, Andrew, right. Andrew, I think I was talking with Jason about this uh, a long time ago thinking, I wish kids would do something like this. I love what Jack White does with his, with his, uh, yeah. third the vault. records vaults. Yeah. Those mm-hmm. are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic with his vaults. And especially for the price that you pay, well, you get your money's worth on that. right. And and the the and thing about so the thing about Jack, I wish kids it, could do it. Well, the thing about Jack in his, his whole, masters, he not he not only owns his masters, he owns his pressing plant. Yeah. He owns yeah. his yeah. assembly. Yeah. He owns it all. He doesn't have to do any. He doesn't have to license. He doesn't have to pay anybody to do anything other than his no, own. But he definitely puts some thought into. Oh sure, sure. Oh. Even the color of the vinyls, the 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 tchotchkes that are added in, they're just fantastic, fantastic. Right. I wish Kiss would do something like that. Mm. Uh, I, think, Kiss, I think the big box isn't numbered, is it? Like Sorry? Jason, you said that. You said Jason, you said it's produced in limited numbers. They haven't put a number on the box, not, have they? They haven't, I, they haven't I, made it exclusive, just no. expensive. Yeah, look right. And I, I, I was speaking to um, Tom Mady, and he said the last batch of um, stuff that he got from Kiss Online didn't even have 2020 copyright epic rights. So I think that's what a lot of people are worried about with some of these little reproductions that are in there, especially the patch and stuff like that, which looks almost so identical. If it, it doesn't have any markings, 
and that suddenly goes out there and what that's if they start good. doing the double platinum one and all that that they start you know people being honest at, at the first but if it passes hands three times then on ebay it's oh, just right. kiss patch and you're you're going is this the vintage one or is this the one from the set i don't know like i don't you start quit you i think you'll start to question what you're buying here or whether yeah the there wasn't much with the description and yeah. i thought maybe it was a warehouse find of old items now that yeah. would be cool yeah. kind of yeah. like how they found those solo album bags you mm -hmm. know yeah. in the late 90s early 2000s i thought maybe oh cool it's a warehouse find but if it's all repro stuff, i don't know i don't know i just it doesn't <laughs> say online if it, it, if it no. was warehouse find then i would justify the price in yeah. a minute in a yeah. minute it yeah. also begs the question why did they have to put them out now if it was why not just wait and do them offshore when everything settles down there there's no there's no time frame based on any of that stuff it's not an anniversary it, you know what i mean it's just well, they, they, need, they yeah. need something else for christmas you have the people that are that are obviously yeah. going to buy the yeah. the live stream but they need something physical that they want kiss under the christmas tree mm. so right. i truly believe that that was why it came out now right 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 uh, so real quick, here's um, John. You had mentioned yeah, Johnny, I got, I you got had it. mentioned the the uh, Jack White Jack set. White, so this yeah. is an example of one of them. This is uh, Icky Thump, the I 10th have, anniversary box. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So let me just what do they run? I think it's sixty dollars a quarter. Sixty five, or if you get the yearly subscription, you save about five dollars per. Right. So it's right. about two two forty for the year. So in this package, you get a a, a limited edition print. You get a pin, you get a card that tells you what's what's all included in the set, right? Where am I here? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so there, yeah. Then you get, check this book out, right? Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like a super thick. And it's so well done, Joe. So is, well done. You know, and it's just got all the cool stuff. And then you get what else is in this. So I, it just, you know, it just begs the begs the question, right? From Just from a price standpoint on some of the recent. 65 um, bucks. Yeah. You know, Look at the white vinyl on that one. Uh, what else? There's and then there's yeah. So what what else is cool is so they keep all the vinyl out. Then you get the, yeah. the big triple gatefold record. You get another mm -hmm. insert. You have more record. You know, uh, let's see what. That's else. a triple vinyl, right, Joe? It is. It is. Yeah, sixty-five bucks. Yeah, for sixty-five bucks. Um, yeah, just awesome. It feels so premium. Like Lyr a, lyric sheet. Yeah. You know, well done. Yeah, so it's just it just and it goes on and on and on. Here's like the the um, uncoated yeah. stock, you know. So anyway, this just gives you an idea of you know. And yes, he does do some of this stuff in house, but you also have to realize that some of this finishing they can't do in house, right? So like the boxes and the pins right. and all that kind right. of stuff, you have to send all that stuff out too. Um, so I don't know. It, it's just interesting how some of this stuff nets out from a price perspective, right? Yeah, right. So that's that's this massive, and you get these once a quarter. And I have to say, almost every quarter, the thing is almost just as stunning as as this. You know, they come up with something new and cool every quarter. So it's pretty amazing. And what's great too is they're licensing stuff from the Johnny Cash family, yeah, uh, from the trust from them. Mm. They did a thing with uh, was it Loretta Lynn? Yeah, um, yeah, that was really cool. And they just did the greatest uh, the greatest hits package. And now they're doing the only way you can get it on colored vinyl is through their vault. And Correct. so it's just really super thoughtful, premium feeling stuff. You never right. feel like I'm going to quit this because it's not worth the money, you know? Right. Mm. Right. How, how far away is this third man record store from you in Detroit, Joe? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. wow. I, I was yeah. there on record store day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. I was there on record store day. Five minutes from our, my work, our pressing plant. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. other, the Nashville one. Yeah. 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 yeah, so just Which shows you how one. cool it can be done. A, lo a lot of artists go into the studio and, and they play a set and then they release it on vinyl like the same night. Or That's night. right. They record direct to acetate yeah. that night. Yeah, yeah. which is really cool as well. Uh, yeah. Iggy Pop's been there. Uh, Death from Above, the Canadian band from yeah. over here. Everybody. Like, yeah, it's just fantastic what he does, man. Were the, kill the Killers there, I think? Killer, the killers, yeah. Yeah. killers, yeah. Who asked which, which one is the main one? I did. Nashville, Pat. Pat. Yeah. Na well, Nashville was the first. The, first. Um, the pressing plant is in Detroit. The yeah. distribution is in Nashville. Oh, Both okay. of them have stores. Mm. Yeah, and Detroit has a massive store. The Nashville store is very small. Very small. small. Yeah, mm. yeah, and the Detroit store is massive. And what's cool is you can take a tour of the pressing plant there. Right. Um, 
you can actually go back and there's there's all the windows where you can watch the people working live on the records and stuff. So it's it's a pretty cool, very I well thought out place. Kiss would do more stuff like that, man. It would just be incredible. Or even just for record store day, just put yeah. something. Yeah, on yeah something. Or even yeah. once a year. Or even once a year. Yep. Uh oh, so somebody said Jason Moore says. I want kiss, not white stripes. Well, I mean, Jason, hold on, hold Jason, on. That's I, the, that's I do have good, something. That's a that's a good point, though. But oh, like, hold on, Pat, one second. Yep. That that that's a good point, though. <clears throat> but I think what's important to to illustrate here is that even though we're all huge Kiss fans, we're all into other bands too. Yeah. And because uh, I I know some people or we you know we may catch flack for it that oh my god all we listen to is Kiss but no, no there's so many there's so many cool other things that uh, that we all listen to we just got into the comparison of of what kiss just put out right now as opposed to what Correct. other bands do for one third the price and and it's just phenomenal i would say to jason Moore, i don't care I, yeah. fair enough fair enough <laughs> Matt, what do you got buddy well uh you've seen this before and uh you've determined that this could be legit but this is a white. Oh, let's everybody have a discussion about this. It's a white double platinum that is the embossed stage version. So there's no, there was no silver on it. Hmm. So we've we've often heard this is the discussion that Pat and I have have had about this. We've often heard that you see these things where they have been peeled. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've seen this in person, and if that thing has been peeled, it was masterfully done. Right. Uh, I don't know. What What do you guys think? Here's my guess on that one. If I could throw my two cents in first, yeah, that cool. almost feel that almost feels like a uh, printer's proof. Yes. A, yes. An early it, emboss, like yes. we want to see what the relief is going to be on the emboss. Right. Is that going to work? That yeah. kind of thing. That's what right. that's what that feels like to me. And, and if this, I had to guess. This, this piece of tape has some writing on it, and it kind of almost proves that it is what it is. I don't know, Jason, if you can put it up there, if you can see this or not. Oh, hold on. Let me throw you back large again. <laughs> he's watching. He's like, ah, oh, it's so smart. I, 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 I'm not supposed to be the producer. I'm just. <laughs> I don't know if I have it the right way. Yeah, you, do, you do, Pat. It's a double platinum uh, Casa yeah, MBLP seventy one hundred two emboss stage number one, but you know anybody could have wrote that, Pat. But the yeah the 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 proof is holding it because I've held it in person, and I've seen a partially peeled, you know, double platinum, and and it's just a mess underneath it. Right, right. So and that is not it's it's and got it, to be honest with you. If you were to peel it, I don't think you would see these nice. I mean, the again. This isn't like mint, but I think you would see a lot of a lot of people digging and trying to pull sure, yeah, stuff and, right, yeah. and, and holes all over this thing. But uh, it's just kind of stunning, you know, when yeah. you look at it. That no, has, I think, it has to be I, a I think Joe's right. So, I think Joe's right. That's what it is. Because yeah. It, yeah. So, I don't well, think it could have been peeled. Well, there's, there's, I, I think, I think it's right too. Um, there's actually, I, I'm gonna mispronounce his last name, and I, and I do apologize about this, but. Uh, do you guys know Claudio Bergman? Yes. He, he's been doing these awesome interviews with uh, Dennis Wallace. Wallace. Who, those things are who great. Was, who was mm. the guy that was helping. He was the art director on a lot of those stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and he goes into saying how they created Double Platinum. So I think with listening to Claudio's interview and looking at what Pat showed us, I do think that's legit. So go back and watch Claudio's episode. Mm, he's going yeah. to do more. Yeah. But uh, it's super interesting to hear how Dennis – um created that our, our friend quentin nelson said he has a double platinum like that pat and he thinks his is peeled so if you're listening quentin um you know let me know let us know in the chat does it look like it's you know rough underneath like maybe glue or like does it look like it's been peeled or is it smooth like pat is pat's is it's completely flawless you know, so yeah. I think I think this now explains the Australian white double platinum album. Is that Australians <laughs> had, 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 had an aluminium foil shortage in the in the seventies? So we'd go in and we'd peel the silver off and just put it back into the thing to, to wrap up. Yeah, that's that that explains the white. Here's a good here's a good question, uh, <laughs> Pat. Mm. Rocco, Rocco Deluca asks, "How is the Kiss Room coming along, Jason? How is it, Pat?" <laughs> 
Pat well, Lucero, Pat Lucero just earned a ticket directly to heaven <laughs> for going in there. <laughs> well, look, it's it's been a family venture over at Jason's. It has. Uh, you know, we have a lot of laughs uh, looking at this stuff. Uh, we pick on each other, which is great. We can bust balls and and uh, just, you know, going through some of this stuff, you know, uh, I, I, I once had a very large collection, but I sold it in 1990. So for me, uh, going back and seeing some of this stuff, it's just great. And uh, it's a work in progress and it's a, a little out of time. And let me tell you, he's got a lot of crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So now now I've moved I've moved three times. Oh shut up, Andrew. <laughs> three times. And I don't know, like we're in my living room right now. There's a lot of stuff here. The walls are covered in 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 all kinds of frames and there's all kinds of stuff everywhere. I've moved three times in the time mm. Jason has moved once. And let me tell you, this last time that I moved, it wasn't my choice. Right. So but um I've set up my kiss stuff three times and, and not only do I have the kiss stuff. But there's in my in my bedroom. There's a, a giant wall of action figures that are also set up. Care Bears, uh, no. <laughs> Care Bears. Hello, <laughs> action figures. Pat, Pat, we're gonna do a big unveiling on the tenth year anniversary for Jason's. Uh, That's room. right. It'll be the tenth year anniversary. No, I think we could probably button this up this year. Well, not this year, but uh, you know, within, within in January, a, I think we yeah. can have it buttoned up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, January you know, of what year? Because you guys sound like Ace that he was announcing his solo record. <laughs> it's the spring. Well, in, in our year. defense, in our defense, we've built a lot of furniture. Yeah, yeah. We we had to put multiple display cases together, multiple out, you know, vinyl cases. We had to putting throw... records together. We're putting kids right. together. We, we're, putting... we're putting Space Invader records together. We've done a lot of stuff j other than just cleaning, you know. Mm. But uh, it's it's we've done a lot of stuff. Jason, I've heard that before. About... It'll be over. It'll be over when the hot weather comes. When it... <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, a lot, lot, of, a lot of shifting going on there. What, Joe? Uh, Sorry, Joe. Do you want to talk about the Space Invader stuff at all? Is is now a time? And by, by the way, while you're looking for that, so yeah. Linda's first said, shut the fuck up. This is a KISS podcast. We just want KISS stuff. <laughs> so I wanted to go through Jack White's live from Bonnery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, 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 so here's what you get in this. You get this hot soap. Yeah, <laughs> so awesome. yeah, so what Joe's talking about and what Pat is talking about is um, we had, uh, we had, so our fifth anniversary edition of Space Invader, when we when we shipped these records out, we lost about sixteen of them in the mail. And these are hundred dollar, hundred twenty five dollar records, and we also got some jackets back from Ace that were smudged. So Ace was very nice to sign uh, another twenty one extra jackets for us. And so we have all of these extra components here because when you press records and you print jackets and print posters and stuff, there's always overruns and things like that. So we had all these extra components. So what we decided to do, I, I, I decided to build some, um, uh, put together, me and Pat put together uh, what we have left. Sold. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I have to send some to, to our friend Ken Gullick at E1 uh, to give out. I have to send a couple of copies to Ace. Um, send him one of those smudged autographs. That'd I'll be send great. Smudged autograph one. But we'll we'll have about 15 autographed copies to sell. They'll be on the website. 14. Pay, 14 <laughs> pay, pay attention <laughs> pay attention to kiss my wax because i would imagine uh probably before christmas we will announce something show that beautiful record one more time because so, uh, that, that thing is outstanding so what we got here is we, we'll have about I, I don't know 12 or 12 or so that are blue uh we had our printer that did these and i'll i'll make this a little bigger here our printer that did these i think joe in that right he did a whole run like 700 jackets that came out purple <laughs> Yeah, so when we originally were running these, um, we were doing some color proofs. And so this is what came out. So we got these original purple versions, uh, right. of, of which we have how many, Jason? Four. I'm keeping one. We will have three for sale. All of the rest were destroyed. Mm. So uh, we will have basically kind of a, an Ace Frehley, you know, 1978. Um, per Paul Stanley purple back redo right. where we will be putting these up for sale. And I think, you know, I don't think we're going to ask a premium for these. I think we're just going to sell them for the same price. 
I already said sold. So. Except Hadges <laughs> said, Hadges <laughs> said he's giving Only a foul. Too late. It's too late. No take backs. <laughs> we we like, so just why why do you keep feeding us turkey? Why we, it's like that episode of Seinfeld. Had just comes in, feeds us all his food, so we fall asleep, and he just steals all our kids. <laughs> That's how we got the collection. Ooh, we, also, we also have um, we will have a reduced cost version that is unsigned. It will have all of the components except for the autograph, and uh, we'll be selling those for quite a bit cheaper. And uh, all of that will be coming available probably over the next couple of weeks. And some rolled posters as well. We, we right. have some, some rolled flat, posters. Flat posters, yeah. Right, we have flat posters. I think we had about 30 <laughs> of those, maybe 27 maybe, um, that were not folded. And I have a whole box of folded posters, so we'll probably throw those up for uh, availability if anybody didn't get the record but would still like another um, a copy of the poster for cheap to get Ace to sign it. It would look cool. So, yeah. so that's coming. Stand by. Cool. Mm, great. Great stuff. And if you guys have never seen this thing in person, man, I tell you, I've, I, I have a lot of records, as we all do. This thing is probably one of the best looking pieces of vinyl I've ever seen. The package is outstanding. You guys knocked it out of the park. Very that, well. That was all Joe. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 incredible. Team, team effort. Yeah. Thanks for the compliments. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, somebody asks, will there be another record coming soon? I don't know about coming soon, but we are always chasing avenues and we have a few irons in the fire and we'll see what happens that something may happen something may not happen you know mm -hmm. it's just the way it is you 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 put it out there you make these pitches to people you put uh packages together and sometimes they fly and sometimes they don't we'll see what happens yeah, Keep your fingers if, if you just wanted to get content out there'd be a lot of stuff you could do but i think every time we do something we try and you know do it to the highest quality and you know uh I think I think that's why we're a bit more selective, so we don't just, you know, pick anything. Just that you have a, a slew of products coming out, so that's why we're a bit slow in releasing, you know, the next thing and then the next thing for that reason, you know. Right. Mm. That is correct. There are many things that we're talking about. Let's put it that way. There's a there are a bunch of projects that are floating around out there that that were, you know, in in various states of you know. <laughs> Undoneness or doneness, right? So yeah, we're we're kind of getting there. So we'll see. It, what's probably going to happen is all of a sudden two or three things are going to hit at one time, and we'll have to mm. we'll have to divide them out and figure out what we're going to do. But yeah, yeah, lots of talks. It's interesting. Jo mm, Joel Smith asks, Joe, is it true that Joe used the white stripes as an inspiration when putting together the Space Invader record? It's all true. Yeah, it's all true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Hey, I want to read something real quick. I got this on FAQ earlier today. And I'm sorry, I'm coughing, man. My throat has gotten dry over here. Um, I got this uh, PM, uh, and I just wanted to read it because, you know, they wanted asked if I would shout out. So <clears throat> he says, uh, hi, Jason. My son Jonathan and I will be tuning in tonight. Totally looking forward to it. He is a big fan and has seen every episode. I've done the same, mostly during the original airings because I became a fan there and kissed my wax about 25 minutes ago, our hottest brand book showed up and we will be doing a surprise. What's in the box at home during the broadcast. Mm. He has no idea. I bought it for him. If there's any chance of a shout out to Jonathan and I'm going to, I'm going to mess your last name up. I'm very sorry, but it looks like a Biscopec to me, John. Uh, so if there's any chance for a shout out to Jonathan Biscopec in, uh, in Canada, I really appreciate it. 16 year olds are hugely important in this community. So, John, uh, look, look at the email that, that I got. It's from Chris Biscopec. That's right. That's the same one. <laughs> so, is that the same? Is it say the same thing? Uh, well, because he, so um, Chris made a post on the FAQ uh, just going over all of the December, I guess, kiss dreams that are happening. He went over like this one, then he went over Live 96 that was coming out in December, the New Year's Eve one, and the, the Kissmas broadcast is happening uh, next weekend. And I send him a PM. I go, hey, I really appreciate you you're shouting out a Live 96. I go, send me your email and I'll send you an early version. I'll send you, you know, an early airing of it as a thank you. So thanks for yeah. talking about it. So he wrote me this, he wrote me this review, just thanking me uh, for sending nice. it to him. And uh, these are the kind of people I love doing stuff for. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, That's Chris Biscopec and, and family, you know, you guys are, you guys are awesome. So and, Jonathan, um, 
16 year old <laughs> shits collector thank you so much man for watching the show and uh keep keep collecting man and Jason just ruined the surprise of what's in the box. <laughs> <laughs> you just told him. He said he's yeah, going to give him. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I saw them post in the in the thing earlier that they that he just gave it to him. That's what reminded me to read that. Oh, All right. But you're right. I would have done that, right? <laughs> the, the best part would have been if Jason was like, "All right, I'm not sure about this last name. It's Jason. Uh, is it Smith? I think. It, <laughs> I think it might." <laughs> I hope the first thing the dad said to the son was like, look, son, this is really going to cost you a lot of money if you want to go forward with all of this crap. <laughs> That's right. You see this book? You see what's yeah. in this book? It's Good the luck. closest to you, Come for the disclaimer. Right? It, was a, it was a lecture on financial planning, and it was, if you see anything in this book, you don't buy that. You put that money to one side. <laughs> I just, I was just sent a really, I was just sent a really funny post. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of Kiss collecting groups that that are on Facebook. This, this one that I'm part of is just called Kiss Collectors, all caps, exclamation point at the end. Mm -hmm. And I guess someone did a custom of that twenty of the twenty four inch Art Asylum figures. So the Art Asylum figures were the Destroyer ones, and then later on the Love Gun ones, two foot singing dolls. So you only did those two costumes. Mm -hmm. And someone decided to do uh, a Dynasty Peter. Mm. So, um, interesting. So, so, so basically, they just it's the, the head and the face from the art asylum one, and then it's the, the body dynasty custom. So, a bunch of comments hey, that's great, this is awesome. And the very last comment goes, What a great job! The face and hair are better than most, and the face and the hair is the only thing he didn't touch. So, he's just complimenting <laughs> what a 20 <laughs> year old figure looks like. Forget about all the work he did, but the face and hair, the stuff he didn't touch. Awesome. Somebody asked in the chat. If, uh, I don't know who they're asking, but they're wondering if we got a live uh, on colored vinyl. So yeah, here is Scott, Scott Iker, I think yeah, it is. Scott. Did you get a live on colored vinyl or Viewmaster? Anyone? Anyone buy those things? I, mm. I have them. I bought a live. I bought uh, three copies of a live. <laughs> the Asylum version? Yeah. There's yeah. the Asylum, yeah, asylum version. Buy the Viewmaster. <laughs> yep. So um, I do have the Viewmasters. It's in a box. Actually, no, it's right here. here too. Hmm. Hey guys, I just got a text from uh, from Carol, my wife, and mm -hmm. she says that she can't wait for the next uh, Skipper play uh, Gene Simmons asshole CD. So <laughs> skip. <laughs> so there's, there's the I, love, I love that record. Yeah, Sweet Dirty whatever. Love is great. I love Sweet Dirty Love. Sweet Dirty Love is good. Here's the Viewmaster. Actually, uh, the Viewmaster box that John John Humphrey <laughs> created is the best Viewmaster box. That's mm. correct. Yes, did a little handy dandy work to it. Do you have it with you, John? Yeah, I can grab it real quick. Hang on. Grab it. <coughs> so what I'm, what what's uh, not really great about these, while nice in theory, they're not 3D. Mm. So it's uh, and we're, the box we're, is plain. Were Viewmasters 3D before? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, Fine, yeah, some, yeah, and that's a, uh, Andrew. That's why they filmed those ones where Peter's, you know, putting the sticks uh, out, and that that was all that stuff specifically yeah. for the Viewmaster. Gotcha. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, yeah. Look, so that's what put a decal on the very nice, the box very there, nice. Kind yeah. of personalize it a bit, which would perfect have size. Them anything, yeah. Hey, out of all the collectors here, does anybody have any of those Mexican paintings? Good question, Pat. No, I don't. Nobody paintings like no. velvet? yeah they were like they, they were uh it was like a, a piece of velvet oh. and and like maybe like sixteen by twenty and they you know there was there was tons of them that that I I used right. to have I used to have quite a few of them I have an and, Elvis one yeah yeah <laughs> there you it's go just, it's I got like a velvet the, Elvis man yeah it's just like the Elvis but <laughs> yeah. but a kiss setting you know I have a friend that has a couple but I I personally never got into them. Yeah, That's it's weird, right? Yeah, yeah. I think you know, they're quite unofficial, as we've discussed. Before, yeah, right? absolutely. But, it's yeah. just uh, they're just cool to look at, you know. <laughs> right, right. We also have a question from Jambo Jordy. Mm -hmm. While I've seen the most sentimental episode, is there a never part with item for each of you? Do we want to go around the horn real quick and one item you would never ever part with, Jason? Oh God, you start with me. I would top never... left. Never ever part with 
shit, I don't know. Um, it's got to be your destroyer, right? I, from when I, you were a kid. I, I, oh, yeah, that, destroyer, that, that, Nicholas, not, Nicholas, I would, Nicholas, I would never ever part with my greatest kiss record. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. You, you've already said your side. <laughs> I said my thing in the mile. He's like, nah. You, you should explain that to the viewers. I'm trading uh, some exclusive Kisteria vinyl to Nicholas for some uh, very, uh, ra very rare a coin piece, the poster art, sealed poster art set. Oh, so and the deal happened. That's good. The, the deal okay. happened. So down. he's already sent his end. I haven't yeah. sent my Allegedly. End. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, Jay, Jay, don't send it. Tell him it got lost. Yeah, it got lost in the mail. Uh, I think Joe's right. I think probably that destroyer. I mean, I've had it all of these years since I was four. You know, I, I don't think I would ever part with that. Good question. Yeah, mine would be the the uh, debut record that the first record that I ever had, first Kiss record that I now have signed by the band. I would never get rid of that. And that's that's my thing. Nicholas, uh, I'll grab it. Oh. It's in the post box right now. I would never, oh, I would never part on. with my my signed version. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Very cool. Signed by Gene cool. and Paul in person. Never. That's mm. amazing, right? Everything, yeah. else, everything else must go. That's right. <laughs> you got you to buy Queen vinyl, right? Yeah, exactly. Pat, what about you? Oh my God! Doesn't have to be Kiss, or does it have to be Kiss? Yeah, it's a kiss show. Come right, I, was kiss told, show. I was told, shut the fuck up. This is a kiss podcast. So. <laughs> That's, uh... Well, uh, probably behind me, um, that 16 by 20 that's right there of the first uh, kiss um, outtake, um, that was actually from the actual negative. And I got that signed in 83. And wow, that wasn't and and Gene and Paul were like freaking out, like where did you get this? And you know, so that thing is always dear to me. But uh, anything on that wall is like irreplaceable, and I would never get yeah. rid of it. I know, so. I know, you probably can't tell, but every one of those pieces that are behind Pat's head are completely signed by the full band that you know was on those particular records. It's unbelievable to see it in person. Pat has more autographs than any person I know. Yeah. I'm jealous of the Queen one sign as well that he showed me the other day. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's, that's a beauty. Yeah. You're up, Humphrey. Oh, he can't hear me. You're up, John Humphrey. I'm up. Okay, so of the, all the sign stuff I have, this is from the reunion tour. It's I don't know. It's oh, so big. Nice. Hang on. Look at that. Well, I'm not big. He's fighting with it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Gotta see him fight. Okay, so it's an outtake from the first album, but it's all it's signed. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I, love, I love the glass mat. It's so yeah. cool. Look how beautiful mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, great minds. And that was the, one, uh, the Nixon's open, and that uh, I had a few things signed, but that one's real, you know, special to me. That is beautiful, mm -hmm. Andrew. So it's on the wall in another room, so I'm not going to get up to get okay, it. But, but it, is? Um, <laughs> it, it is. It is also my first album that was signed by everyone, uh, including Bill Coin that I all got. I obtained them all myself. Uh, awesome. Paul and Ace were obtained at a New York Custom Guitar Show in January 2000. Gene at a book dining in 2001. Uh, Ace at the famed uh, Ace Really Birthday Bash. Peter outside of Eddie Trunk's radio show. And Phil Coin at a Kiss Convention. That's awesome. Mm. Hadges, you got a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. You, you don't have to show us. Just tell us. Does the guy have like seven hours for me to tell him? <laughs> you, got, you got to pick one, my one, like, one item. One. Like, oh. <laughs> No, um, uh, honestly, I, I don't. I don't even know how to answer that. I think at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if we could all just have one copy of every single piece of vinyl, and maybe just one poster, you're good. Like at at the end of the day, all the rest of the stuff that we have in our collections is just stuff that we love. But you know, to pick just one piece is 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 next to impossible. I just thought the question. Was what's the thirty-eight items you would not? <laughs> not <Exactly. laughs> that's like back, that's like back to the episodes, Jason, where it would be top ten, and you would have nineteen records. <laughs> well, I'd have 19, nineteen tied for second, third. Right, 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 yeah. right. right. Yeah. Danny, I know you don't collect Kiss anymore, but what about you, man? Do you have anything in your collection that you do? You have Kiss anything that you wouldn't part with? Of course. Of course. No, you know, you know me. I'll, I'll part with anything. As long I as know. <laughs> <laughs> He's I the smartest one out of all of us for quite a while because 
this is like the first uh, bootleg show that I ever had as a kid, like on cassette. And then to find it on vinyl years later, that, that's pretty cool. So I'll, I'll keep that. I remember yeah. specifically going to your house when I was little and copying that cassette. And it was probably yeah. the first bootleg cassette I ever had as well. You know, so if the, it's, that's I love that show too. That show was, was like, it was the first time that I heard Paul Stanley kind of step out of the, the box and start actually talking to the audience instead of just repetitively, you know, going over the same old raps and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Danny, which, mm. which, which record is that? It's Egos at Stake. Oh, Egos at Stake. Yeah, that's yeah. a great record. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually, uh, actually, Danny. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. There you, go, you go, Andrew. I was just I was just gonna say which show it's I know it's a 1980 show I just don't remember which one. Is Wembley, it England? Uh, Wembley, isn't it? Yeah, Wembley, England. Wembley. Wembley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They do. Don't they do your all that I want on that? Oh yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good good uh, version of that too. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> what were you gonna ask, Nicholas? Oh no, I was just gonna ask Danny because of, because he got rid of a lot of stuff. What was the hardest thing that you did have to part with when you did sell it? Was there anything where you went, oh, this one, this one actually hurts really deep in the heart? You know, is there anything? No, I can't, anything? Okay. I can't think of anything. <laughs> A lot of it went to that guy up there in the corner. Mm. <laughs> and it's still in the same box. Yeah, awesome. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave Scott, what do you anything you know anything in LA in a in a in a Yeah, that's it. The, 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 ir the irony is I've been fucking parted from it. I'm in <laughs> I'm in Australia. It's in LA. Um it'd be the uh, the creatures that I got signed in London when they did the oh promo, yeah, the promo in store, store yeah. in eighty mm -hmm. two was it and they all they all signed that so it'd be it'd be that that was the first thing I had ever gotten signed by them I'd never seen them play live I mm. travelled from Manchester to London to see it so wow it's it's kind of special that's awesome. is that the story where you got separated from your friends and you had to take the train by yourself was that the one or is that a different yeah yeah mm. from from Dave. <laughs> oh, yeah, from Dave. Okay. Right. Dave. <laughs> and, and, right. And 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 apparently from another English friend, he said Ace was very refreshed at that at that signing. <laughs> like yeah, a, his, chugging, chugging his beer, like, <laughs> Yeah, the, it depends on where you were in the line. The later in the day that you got stuff signed, <laughs> Ace's signature just went right off the <laughs> nose. You know, you know, at, you know, at this juncture, at at, the, at, at this juncture, you know. <laughs> All right, guys, we are three minutes from two hours. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, I say we probably wrap it up, don't you think? Yeah. Yes. No? Anybody? Sure, nobody has anything wah, better to do? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say yes. <laughs> yeah, Joe is Joe. Like the fun track family that says goodbye one by one up the steps and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's> Brady, but <laughs> night. <laughs> well, um, so I guess just to, to sum up, you know, I want to thank everybody that's in the chat, everybody that's been watching, all the people that's watched uh, me and Andrew and Joe and Nicholas and Humphrey and Danny's been on the show, all, just all of these people that have been on the show. Thank you for watching. And uh, I guess we're going to continue to do some more shows. Maybe this will be our new format. I don't know. We'll talk about it uh, afterwards. It's pretty neat. Uh, at least do some shows like this, but. Thank you for five great years. We hope we have, you know, some more great years. Um, all of you guys that are on the screen, Andrew, Nicholas, Joe, you know, you know, we, we've done some really cool shows, man. And I appreciate all of you guys. And uh, I, for one, just want to say thank you because I really look forward to watching all of these episodes. I literally get a, 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 a bucket of popcorn and yeah. I get my snacks ready and I yell at Jason, what the you know where's this episode you know yeah. you know and uh it, it's, so, so does joe and nicholas <laughs> but uh you, you know it, it's 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 hats off to all of you guys because man what a great 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 thing you have here I made some yeah. great great friends yeah. so far yeah. in this five-year journey I, I can't believe that we have people like john humphrey and john five and mark slaughter and all of those guys just Want to talk about kiss shit, man? It's 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 mind boggling to me. So I appreciate every one of you guys. Yeah, you too, man. I appreciate all the hard work you guys do, and 
putting together the shows, uh, adminning the pages. Uh, I've learned so much. Uh, I'll get to talk to John some more because I have very similar stories about being on the road in my bunk watching you guys. And I hope to have things return to normal very soon at some point so I can be back out on the road in my bunk watching your shows again. Yeah, we can all meet in person for... Yeah, for, yeah, and do that yeah, as well. That yeah, awesome. I got to come see the record store, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. The last concert I went to, Andrew was the one that I uh, that we hooked up in Buffalo. That we, we hung out. Yeah, oh, we wow. did. That's yeah. the last. Con- that, well, that's the last show this year that I that I've been to. Kiss? Yeah, we we, we saw Kiss in Buffalo together, and uh, he he brought me uh, some cool gifts, and uh, I just remember we got to the show and it was cold. And then we left the show, and it was like two feet of snow outside. I, was like, I, gotta, I gotta get home. How I gotta get home? And, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I never made it to work the next day. Yeah. Wow. Uh, John, John, I'm not, I'm not, sh- I'm not sure. I like this parallel between I'm feeling tired and wired from the road, and so I need to put on a Kiss podcast to, 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 to drift me off to sleep. Like, <laughs> yeah. You guys put me yeah, like a right to sleep. sleep. Yeah. Exactly. I'm in my Actually, bar, that's like, what my difference is. Wow. It doesn't put me to sleep. I usually do it on the days off. I'm in my hotel room watching you guys. Just you know, I'm binging watching, you know, catching up on all the shows. So, but I check the pages every day, every yeah, day. Yeah. So Gregory Dash says Jason and Tom, and I'll throw in Andrew as well, got me collecting again. And I think that's what all this is about in one in some respects, right? One is to entertain and form, but then also, you know, to get people who may have gone dormant or lost their their love for the band or for collecting, you know, even maybe whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, that's a it's a cool sentiment. So thank you for that, uh, Gregory. And then there was somebody who wanted a shout out, and I'm gonna miss who they were. Somebody from uh, somebody wanted a shout out. Yeah, so we'll just say we'll shout that person out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here's one for you, Joe. Yeah, look at that. Thumbs up, Joe. Uh, no hard <laughs> feelings, buddy. That was one of the ones that was cut. Should be a comma there. Life. That's thumbs up, Joe, not thumbs up, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's seven of yours. Yeah. Lots, yeah. lots of great comments. Rosie That's Luck right. and Tim Kliz and Jason Moore. Mm-hmm. Lots of people. Tom Kelly. Um, lots lots of good comments and everything. Oh, so. Chris in Bangkok wants a, wants a shout out. So there you go. There you go, Chris in Bangkok. Nice. So. Mm. Very cool. Danny Dabs, everybody drink. <laughs> Danny, thank you for being my friend for 36 years. Um, it's been my pleasure and uh, my disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, buddy. All right, guys. If that is it, we will see you on the next one. Absolutely. Bye,